Welcome, King James. I am the king of this podcast. Uh, okay. <laughs> Domain. <laughs> Is um, that Al? That's, yes, Mr. That's Rhythm. Al? Okay, okay. Uh, one thing I want to say right off the bat. This character, the antagonist of this film, is named Algae Rhythm. It is a play on algorithm. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's what that was about? It is. It's subtle. It's subtle. Oh, it's subtle. Oh, okay, okay. But uh, for most of the movie, they take to calling him Algae, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which then sounds like they're saying Algae every single like, time. Like the, the like little the green, green undersea, mossy, mossy <laughs> bacteria or whatever it is. And then at one later point, he says, call me Mr. Rhythm. And I'm like, yeah, you should have been calling him Mr. Rhythm Much for the last cooler. hour. Much cooler. Much cooler. The screenwriter should have made that decision. Mm. Algae sounds so dumb when they're like, Algae has kidnapped my son. And you're like, your son must be pretty fucking weak if Algae could get him. I want to call out right away. I just looked up Algae Rhythm in the Villains Wiki. Okay. In, the, in the Villains Wiki? Yeah, do you know about the Villains Wiki? It's I do. a collection of all villains, of right? Yes. It says that he was portrayed by Don Cheadle in That's his true. first villainous role. Not true. Not true. Don Cheadle's a bad guy and out of sight. Yeah. I feel like there's probably others. Like, has Don Cheadle been, like, the main antagonist of a thing? And also the no, question is, maybe is not. the Villains Wiki run by someone who doesn't know that non-franchise movies exist? Probably not. But I'm just saying, Emmy, current Emmy nominee Don Cheadle has definitely yeah. played Absolutely. negative character, you know, Absolutely. antagonistic characters Absolutely. before. Um, That's all. Sorry. It's like, there was some, who was it? There was, like, I, I think it was when Mark Ruffalo was like saying pro Israel stuff on Twitter or something. There was like some Marvel actor getting mildly canceled for something online. Mm. And I saw people on Twitter uh, like like Marvel stands saying like Mark Ruffalo should be grateful. He was nobody before Kevin Feige. Hired <laughs> right. him. And it's just <laughs> to this, them. Maybe it's that's this true. Right. Where it's yes. like yes. you didn't exist. Don Cheadle didn't exist before he was the second actor to play War Machine. He was. And that's the perspective that the villains uh, wiki uh, mods are coming from. C can I just read some of the other things here on the Space Jam A New Legacy uh, quotes page? Do you have to? I yeah, want to. Right, oh, okay. Okay. I want to right, because I think right. it's a pretty good summation of the bleakness of this movie, okay? First of all, the quote I read, uh, of course, the famous line, welcome King James, I'm the king of this domain, <laughs> has the parenthetical before it from trailer, LeBron has just been pulled into the serververse for the first time. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you for... Uh for clarifying um i i said this as my sound check but the bugs bunny line if we're going out we're going out loony mm -hmm. uh of course uh, granny brackets facing off with chronos i'm going old school on his butt on his butt uh-huh Granny's got a lot to say in this movie. too much yeah uh we should silence granny uh granny's canceled uh from trailer lebron james what in the matrix hell mm -hmm. lebron james from trailer looking for his son Bet Will Smith ain't got to deal with this. I don't remember him saying that in the movie. I remember him saying that. I tried to block out as much of the movie as <laughs> I, possible. I can't remember why he says it, though. LeBron James. Granny's out here having a martini at halftime. Granny. Haters gonna hate. How about this? That, that happens. How about this famous line? Lola Bunny. We'll get your son back. I promise. <laughs> That's a good line. She's right. <laughs> she pulled it off. Six credited screenwriters. Well, here's Zendaya. <laughs> you, you got one of the hottest stars in Hollywood, right? Playing Lola Bunny, a beloved character, saying such famous lines as, got you, Bron. I have a rant about her, about the treatment of Lola Bunny that uh, you, you need to remind me to. Yeah, to I'm going to jump in on that. that. I'm going to tag in on that. I'm going <laughs> to fucking alley-oop that rant. <laughs> La last two quotes I wish to read. This one says in brackets, repeated line. Okay. Algae rhythm. It's game time. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't really need to repeat it. There's only one game. Yeah. No, he repeats it though. And then here's the final quote on this page for Space Jam, A New Legacy, the movie we're talking about today. Attributed to Fred Flintstone. Yabba dabba do. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, does he... Is he in it? I he don't he comes running down the hill, right? Okay. That, yeah. It's in a crowd shot. Like, I sure. guess he says that, but in the mix, 18 <laughs> other characters are also saying their catchphrase. <laughs> like Tony Soprano saying Bada Bing or whatever. Right. <laughs> Clint Eastwood saying, like, Gran Torino or whatever. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> he should. God, you. Okay. God, let me just I, I do the introduction as quick uh, as possible because we're just overflowing with takes here. This is Blank Check with Griffin and David. I'm Griffin. I'm David. This is a podcast about filmographies, directors who have massive success early on in their careers. They have a series of Blank Checks with their careers. Whatever. That's not what this episode's about. <laughs> yeah. This episode's about uh, several years ago, uh, uh, people demanded that my brother, James Knee Jamesy Newman, 
come on the show after many stories uh, were told about our childhood together. And we did a, a sibling's choice as we had done before with yep. Joey Sims and Romley Newman. And James picked Space Jam, which was uh, arguably your your pivotal movie growing up, right? It was kind but of the landmark. A movie, movie you shared as a... Yeah, a I think our, our... Yes. Yeah. Right. Not necessarily my favorite movie, but just one that we experienced together. Yes. You and one that it. was Well, one that was also just marketed right at my soul at the time. Yes. Yeah, it was, and, and, they and were coming it, after me. And that it was a yeah. cross-section of like uh, Michael Jordan being your hero and Bugs yeah. Bunny being my hero. One of the few things we shared at a young age when we usually did not get along. So you came on and you talked about that. And we, for a while now, have just had on the spreadsheet, well, of course, James will come back and we'll talk Space Jam 2. People have been questioning. Why aren't you guys continuing to cover the DC movies or do like Marvel updates or whatever? And there's a part of it that's just like a thousand other fucking podcasts do them. We start to feel burdened by it. Yeah. You don't want to interrupt the schedule by having to do four of these a year. It's more interesting to do the current releases that other podcasts aren't going to cover, which is why we're doing this in Hotel Transylvania, even though they're not directors we've covered in addition to the directors we do cover. But Jesus fucking Christ, this goddamn movie. Yeah. Like, I don't. I regret that we committed to doing an episode on it other than that I had to watch this movie closely. You were going to watch it. I was going to watch it either way. Although we did say in the theater at one mo- at one point, I think it was probably about 30 minutes in that we would have walked out. You said if that, not for... You said that 15 minutes in, James. Okay, 15 minutes, 15 minutes in. <laughs> it's a tough early hang, this movie. Yes. I will say. I do think it improves. Uh, I, I mean, do. I we're do. Gonna be, we're going to be talking a lot of relative scale here today. Yes. I mean, it's not a good movie. I will say. I think the pre-serververse stuff is like deathly. Like that's when you turned to me, James, when you were like, "Very, this is wallpaper." Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It it, it had no entertainment value. Yes. I will say, LeBron is a great actor. Nope. Uh, I'm wait. I'm thought he was so convincing. Okay. Look. So I think I'm going to be the most positive person on Space Jam in this room, and we are in the room. Right. We are in the room. We're in the room. This is our first in-person record since March. 8th, 2020. We are all in the same room. We are Ben's new apartment. Mm-hmm. Come on, Ben. Okay, so we I picked a name at some point. Okay. When I first moved you in did. here. It's and very I, nice, because Ben's old apartment was called Small Fine. When we recorded right. there, we called it Small Fine. This is definitely much bigger and more fine. This apartment's like, fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. I like that. Yeah. yeah. How about if it's like... Um, well, because it's got to have a size thing. I don't know, but I don't want to call it like big. No, but it's, it's like, a good size. It's a good it's size. A good, you got some space. Good, here. good, fine. Good, fine. Good, fine. All right. Good, anyway. fine. With we'll, we'll, we'll refine. Yeah, that. we we'll, should <laughs> refine. Okay. We'll refine. Two, two things. I have to say two things. Sure. This movie surpassed my expectations, but I think I really did expect the worst thing of all time. Our, our text story we have with the Doughboys. Yeah. We've been texting about this movie for a while, for, mm-hmm. for a couple of months. Every clip that would drop or every whatever. Every detail, right, every yeah, new yeah. interview, that was our regular dumping ground. And then you saw it and you said, it's better than I thought it would be only because I thought it would literally be the worst movie of all time. Right. I really expect, and it's not good. Obviously. And to be fair, you relayed that to me. I did. Which, I mean, both had really low expectations going in, but maybe it bumped them up to just, there might be some yes, entertainment right. value yeah, you, related. You then did follow yeah. it up by saying, like, it's awful. It's not good. Yeah. right? It's, it's not, not good, good but movie. I was expecting right. truly my least favorite thing I've ever seen, and it was a little bit... I don't think it. LeBron does a terrible job I in do. this movie. I think he's horrible. I, do, I think he does about as... as about a, he, he does what he can do, which is, like, very little. So, look, this probably gave you just an unstructured series of rants because who the fuck cares about the plot of this movie? Uh, and there's just, like, 18 different elements to talk no, about. We definitely have to talk about the plot of this movie. There's well, we will, but that's its about. own rant. I'm saying okay, rather than structuring right. the episode around going through that. Can I can I throw out my LeBron thought, like, right off the bat? Sure. Because now we're, we're in it. Welcome to the Space Jam, right? Uh, which, by the way, uh, I talked about this with the podcast, The Ride Boys. Uh, Jason Sheridan, I agree, apparently is a sentiment that Bugmane also holds. Mm. Uh, notorious uh, podcast. Yeah, I'm not sure Bugmane. I want to align with Bugmane, but sure. Um, this movie should be called Sp- Cyberspace Jam. I know that's like a fucking silly title, but also Space Jam makes zero sense as the title for this film. Does Space Jam? Well, it makes no sense because space is not involved. Though. They take Marvin the Martian spaceship and fly around in space to no, get from true. one planet to they another. They do. Well, you know, actually, they do do that. So, actually, right. That's the only reason yeah. it's called Space Jam. And I have to believe that's the reason why the different properties that. are visualized as planets. Yeah. I yeah, would right. actually almost argue that it's more of a space movie than it is a jam movie. I think this is 
just not a basketball movie. There's not almost a lot of at jam. All. No. no. Um, What's wild is that it's not a basketball movie, and also the basketball game in this is ostensibly longer than it is in the original film. It's very long. It's an hour long. It's an hour long. It's a long. full half of the movie. Right. Yeah. Which the original movie is like 65 minutes when you take out the opening and closing credits. This movie is, 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 is Two hours? quite long. It's 150 a, it's a, it's, something? A, it's an hour and 55 minutes long, yes. Uh, should it be called Cyberspace Jam? I just like, pointedly, when they play the game, it is terrestrial. Like you see trees and shit in the background. Well, they're on a planet. That's true. Okay, but that's like saying like this is a space podcast because we're on wait. a planet that's in space. Well, that's not. Wait, 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 wait. In Space Jam, the original, are they in space for the game? Yes. But they're on a planet, right? They're dealing with like fucking aliens. The point is yeah, they leave right. Earth. They do leave Earth. They this go to Mora Mountain or whatever. Or whatever. I don't but remember. either way, I mean, the point it's, it's a sequel. Either way, it's a sequel anyway. So it they're going to. I mean, that, it has I mean, to be that's like no, one of the. You could have called it Cyberspace okay, Jam. Listen, that's why scientists not the- <laughs> that listen to the show, please weigh right. in. Let us know. I mean, like, this is the fun. Like, because when they were going to have Jeff Gordon or whatever, it was going to be called Race Jam, right. where it's like, well, no, no, no. Jam is basketball. You can, but it's like, no, but you need the, it's just what's imprinted in Wait, people's heads now. They were going to make it a driving movie. They were oh, gonna have okay. a driving movie. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get no. to my LeBron thoughts in a we second. We talked yeah, yeah, about yeah. that it's on so the last boring. Space Jam episode. I'm going to get to my LeBron thoughts in a second, but first movie comes out, because there's a little more I found out since we, we did the last episode, right? Uh, first movie comes out is a big hit, right? But it's also like a big hit with an asterisk, which is it costs so much fucking money. It was so expensive for the time. It cost like $90 million 25 years ago. It made like $90 million domestic. It did 250 worldwide. Right. So that's it did like... Well worldwide. And obviously profit. did well on video. And, right. right. And, and more so, did a billion dollars in merchandising. So they were just like, it's worth it for us. Cash cow, even if theatrically these movies are so expensive to do, right? The Jordan deal would have been even more expensive for the sequel, but they go ahead... Hire hire animators. There's things that have come out that the fucking sequel was going to be about a villain named Berserko, played by Mel Brooks. They didn't have a script, but they were hiring animators and hiring Mel Brooks and designing the character and then going like, we'll write it later. And Berserko was some new fucking alien villain, right? Um, they're developing it, and then it turns out that it was a bluff, and this one Warner Brothers executive who had, like, gotten the green light, was hiring people to work on it, had never gotten Jordan's commitment. You just assumed... I'll figure that out later. No, right. Jordan he was, said no, and he was like, I'll win him over eventually. Right, I'll get, exactly. I'll, and, I'll get him on board. Right, and then like nine or ten months in, Jordan he was like... Berserko. Right. But they re-signed Joe Pitka. Like, right, right, right. Then Reitman was back on, and then like nine months in, Jordan was like, conclusively no. For the fifth time, no. Right. His argument was apparently just like, I did that movie. I don't really like being in a movie. It's a boring process. I feel no need to do that ever again. Right. So then the movie immediately gets shut down, but Warner Brothers has this juice, which is like, this is the first time the Looney Tunes have been profitable and relevant in a while. A thing I didn't realize was that the last theatrically released Bugs Bunny cartoon was 1969 until they did a Looney Tunes short called The Duxorcist, I think in the late 80s. Okay. Like they were really kind of stagnant and the Looney Tunes were like repackaged Saturday morning cartoons, right? Like they still exist. When Cartoon Network launches in the early 90s, they're playing Looney Tunes all the time. But, like, they weren't making any new shit with them. When they did the first, what was it, Hair Jordan commercial, which was the Super Bowl commercial with Bugs Bunny and Michael Jordan, that was kind of like the first new Bugs Bunny thing in a couple decades. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That blows up, right? The commercial's huge. Then they do a follow-up commercial. That's also huge. They do this McDonald's promotion where they sold cups that were different NBA stars with different Looney Tunes. That's fucking huge. That leads to the 90s wave of Looney Tunes characters wearing hip hop regalia right. t-shirts, which then become this big money earner. And that's where the movie comes from, where they're like, Bugs Bunny's now relevant again. It turns out there's like this nostalgia for the character that we've been setting on, but also the cross section of him into this other world is huge for us. Then movie comes out, hit. Jordan doesn't want to do the sequel. They're like, fuck. The chemistry, the formula is replicate this again. So it's Space Jam 2, canceled. Race Jam with Jeff Gordon, almost happens. Spy Jam with Jackie Chan yep. was the first one announced, doesn't go through. Skate Jam yep. with Tony, Tony Hawk. Hawk. Yep. And then there was a golf one with Tiger Woods. I don't know if they ever came with the title. They didn't, one. but, you know, they, they talked to Tiger Woods. Kids certainly. love golf. 
Kids love it. Love they golf. love golf. <laughs> love it. David, they love it. It's so fun. I, I would say, though, that... Tiger uh, was so ubiquitous that it well, was Well, not only was Tiger... Uh, you and I were ubiquitous, saying this. But, but I think there's something about Tiger His that persona. tacks on to Michael Jordan in a way that LeBron really doesn't, which Ti- is there's something very unknowable about Tiger. Key. So, you know, he's, he's sort of... He's both, you know a fierce competitor and embraces like the the success and notoriety but also does not give much of who he is publicly he which was elusive tr- and yes. mythical but he was also at the time very family friendly yes. very like shiny Again, and you know very similar to mass Jordan. appeal yes. right yeah. exactly you know everyone likes tiger he, and, he, and now he continues to be very family friendly yes. and have a great reputation well, but, he, and, but here's the other thing this is the other thing <laughs> like james and i were talking about this after the fact there's there's juice there's inherent juice in the fact that Jordan was going through shit at the time of Space Jam which we talked a it's lot in, about we talk about it it's in, in our movie. original it's episode part of the drama the, the gambling things coming around him his dad getting murdered the the fact that he's like well that's not in the movie right but but the you no, know no, the it, is, it is it is it is him saying yes, 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 that's yes that's no, in, in the, the first dad, scene it's true he, and in, in the press conference the first scene of Space Jam he says you know, with something like with what happened with my father, I want to. No, you since know, the death, I think he literally says since okay. the death of my father. You know, yeah. I want to play baseball. Right, and, and that, this is an important point. I feel like, which is to the extent that LeBron James is the author of this movie, which I think to a, a fairly large extent he is, almost is, by default. It is an incredibly by no stepping up right. insecure movie. Yes, in a way that Space Jam was not at all. In that LeBron James has a lot. If you just think about the entire career of LeBron James. Mm-hmm. There is a there lot things of things to mind. There's a lot of conflict. I mean, yeah. it's different than the conflict with Jordan, but there's a lot of conflict. And Space and Jam is staring all the Jordan conflict head on in ways that in uh, like Space Jam goes so far as in ways that are probably not even fair to Michael Jordan. The yeah. way that the first Space Jam lampoons his baseball career is probably over the top. It represents it as worse than it was. Yes, yes, I yes. think that Jordan was on board with that, though, because he knew, like, of course, it, it's yeah, better if I yeah, laugh at he, it. Of right, course right. he was. And, yeah, and yeah, LeBron yeah. instead, basically, and even the, the credits announced this, which is just like, this guy's amazing. Everything has worked. He's the greatest player of all time. His only problem is he's a dick to his son. Right. Here's, That's it. All right. I have <laughs> yeah. some pushback. Okay. There's a pivotal line in this movie where Al G. Rhythm, played by Don Cheadle, an Academy, Academy Award, Award nominee, yeah. 11 time Emmy nominee, nominated, of course, for his wonderful work in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier this year. We really love 97. How well he did, yeah. Says to LeBron's son that LeBron has a record of abandoning his family. Now, he is alluding, of course, to LeBron leaving the Cavaliers yes. and then leaving the Heat. Uh huh. Now, so it's it's a I, I was like Al, chill out. LeBron LeBron appears to be a good family man. Like just because the guy left a team doesn't mean he's you know. But that's the subtle undercurrent to Space Jam, and it's an undercurrent not like the original yeah. where it's in your face. Is like yes, LeBron is a great great success in all ways. Yes, LeBron has climbed the mountain, but everyone kind of you know doesn't like LeBron as much, right? Like it's like a little. Everyone's kind of like, well, can I push back on that a little? Which yeah, is, of course, th- they've they've already by the point that he says that to his son, they've already introduced algae rhythm as this you know horrible manipulative Al- force who is plays on people's guy. insecurity. He's not okay, a great guy. Michael Jordan in the first Space Jam. It's like the world is telling Michael like yes. this baseball thing is a joke, and and Michael is basically for the first half of the film Billy Bob Thorntoning it, where he's like. I, I don't play basketball. Right. I, I'm not here to play basketball. I, which is kind the, of The Looney Tunes are throwing him the ball and he's saying, I don't know what this is. Basically. Right. You know. LeBron is not burying himself in this movie in the same way. In any way. But he also, I will also say, he is less of a mess than Michael Jordan. Just, just on, even though sure. there is stuff. He, Michael Jordan, it's messy. Especially uh, right yes, then. But, but it's interesting that that Space Jam is trying to stare all of the mess that Michael Jordan was going through yeah, in the face. Not, this is and LeBron it. is trying to sanitize, but in his own way is telling on himself more than Michael Jordan did by like what he chooses to acknowledge and doesn't. And, and even just like, as you're saying, opening scene of original Space Jam, right? Him playing with his dad, I believe I can fly. Yeah. Sweet scene. Then it goes to the fucking opening credits song with this banger of a song. And this montage, the, the, the high point, of right? The which right, yeah, absolutely demented that they don't do that song in the opening credits of this. Like, it just is so obvious to hire some new artists to do Space Jam 2021 version. I remember the credits of this movie. I don't remember the music. Though. Some absolutely it's generic just, song that right, sucks. It's ass, just something else, right? right that yeah. eats my butt. Like, it's the whole soundtrack <laughs> sucks. 
They, you do the song. Like, I obviously understand you're not going to cover I Believe I Can Fly because R. Kelly, you don't want to fucking touch that. Do Welcome to the Space Jam. Uh, but you do this fucking opening credits that's like, look at everything LeBron's accomplished. And then you cut back and it's like him just being an asshole to his sons, right? Whereas in Space Jam, you cut back from that and it's Jordan at a low point. It's him at a press conference saying, my dad was just murdered. I'm retiring. And as you said, James, a, a key point, the original Space Jam does a very good job of, despite the fact that it's set up, this is Michael Jordan, one of the most famous people in the world, arguably the most dominant athlete in his field of all time, right? The most dominant any athlete has ever been in any field. Makes him feel like a normal fucking guy. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, the first Space Jam shrinks Michael Jordan down. It's successful. And which this seems film impossible, doesn't right. even try to do that. It does the opposite, which is, uh, if we're open on you know, LeBron's house, look at the fucking view. Yeah. yeah this is like a $20 million home. It's a nice view. It, it's a great view, but, a, but even the scene that they shoot between yeah. he and his wife, you're looking at it this like a uh, picture frame window behind LeBron where you can see all of Los Angeles. And uh, whereas uh, Jordan, again, as part of, drilling down on the controversy and sort of also what was at the moment was seen as wrong with Michael Jordan. They put him in a Birmingham, you know, suburban, right. nice home, but a suburban got home. The, right. got the, the wife, like the kids are running out of a minivan. Right. Wait, you what know. do you want to say, Ben? Is that his real family? No. No, in both no. cases, fake families, fake in, actors. In, but that's that's also was, in both cases, like, assuming. you know, LeBron has three kids and they're three kids, you know, like. They change their names. It's analogous, but It's basically supposed to represent is it that the aspirations have changed? Like, whereas it used to be like, yeah, I want to think of my athletes as like someone I could get a beer with. And now it's like, I want to think of my athletes as these like mogul well, gods. Well, it's this Instagram, right? like look at their fucking house, look at right. their life thing that doesn't translate to a movie where you want to relate to people. But, but I, I, it's tougher I, to relate I, to. I, right, in social media, you want aspirational shit. I, yeah. I sort of agree with that, but I also just think it's it's just the person. Uh, yeah. David, yes, I think yes. you, if, if this were Giannis on Detacumbo's Space Jam, I think you could put him in a in a country home. You could put him in a house, a, a small house on the water in Greece. You know, of course. like Giannis. Uh, yeah. There's such a person. I mean, the thing well, is, but, but, but it's a, it, 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 but it's also that Giannis, similar to Jordan, you know, basketball was their singular public focus, and it, even though Jordan became this marketing phenomenon, you know, it never felt like he wa like he wasn't against that. And I obviously love making money and all that, but he he never wanted that. Near, anywhere near as bad as what he wanted competitively. Right. Whereas, whereas LeBron wants to be a mogul. Yes. And, and yes. not just a mogul, but a, you know, a role model. The, you know, it's a, every, he, the, everything around, and I'm not saying it has taken away from his basketball career at all. He's been right. incredibly successful, but it's always been hand in hand. Yes. And, and like, not just like, you know, Jordan's famous thing of like Republicans buy shoes too. I don't want to fucking, you know, like take a stand on shit. Uh, people arguing that he should have been more political at the peak of his power. Jordan was just like, look, I play basketball and I do things that help build my image as a dominant basketball player. When Jordan was doing the 8 billion commercials he would do a year, they would always center around him as a basketball player, right? Yes, yes. Whereas LeBron wants to be like 18 different things at the same time. And he wants to be like... This is why I prefer LeBron. But I find Jordan more dramatically <laughs> But, but, but yeah, well, We're not talking about as people. We're talking right. about as, as the basis of a movie, right? A movie riffing on their persona. And I would also say that that Jordan quote is, I think, sort of works two ways where it's often just cited working one way, which is that Jordan just really cares about money. Yes. So he doesn't want to get into politics, which I think it's a little more than that, which is also Jordan really, you know, yes, he cares about money, but also like it's not like he, he mostly cares about basketball. He's and to be in an ad is one thing, but yes. to wade into politics is another. And I think right. Jordan correct, correct, uh, correctly in, intuited that to wade into politics was more than just maybe something that would hurt his bottom line, but also something that would, would you know, take a chunk of his energy and time and life. But, also, you know. but his main vice is, vice is gambling. Yes, you yes, know, and yes, like, you know, yeah. Jordan doesn't want to, you know, LeBron's main vice is what? Like starting schools <laughs> and being like. Well, well but, but to be fair, I mean, you know, LeBron's main vice, it's not really a vice, but relates to. The NBA, right? Where it's like what, what LeBron has done vis-a-vis -vis the NBA is controversial. What he's done sure. with his career is controversial. Now, he, LeBron might be uh, completely right about, first of all, his right to do all this stuff, but also uh, just sort of like that it was right for him and all that. But at the same time, like this, the, the movie just, other than that one throwaway line by a villain, 
fails to acknowledge that this is like, you know, in a lot of corners reviled, right? And yes. that, and I'm not saying that the film has to, uh, uh, you know, jump on that the same way it did with Michael's baseball career. But that sounds like a conflict that it could be useful in a film. Ben looks deeply confused. I want to take the opportunity to, for once, clarify a thing I do know about basketball. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, what James and David are referring to is LeBron has stirred a lot of ire over the years for constantly sort of thinking as like a businessman first and jumping from one team to another mm -hmm. oh, to whatever okay. thinks is most advantageous for him at that moment versus like a Jordan who had the loyalty to the Bulls for so long, was invested in that team, invested in a town, you know, right, right. became this local yeah. hero and all that sort of shit. Yeah, LeBron has changed the NBA. LeBron's decision to go from Cleveland uh, Miami. to Miami and build, and not just go there, but build the team around him in Miami sort of using social persuasion and, you know, sort of uh, recruiting other people to do the same thing he did, not just affected his career changed and the way people viewed him, game. but yeah. has now had a ripple effect where uh, the NBA is less about franchise and city and a lot more about uh, player empowerment and players sort of having the power to shape teams and therefore the league mm -hmm. uh, the way that they would like to. So I'm going to live in this city now and I can get these three players to come with me. And it's sort of, uh, you know, again, the, the negative view is that it undermines also the team building aspect, like really, in, as opposed to, oh, you have to you know, draft smart or trade smart or make smart signings. It's just like, can you recruit? you know, one guy to want to come live in your city and play for your organization. And if you can, he can go get three more guys and that's it. And, and he sort of wields his celebrity and his like legend status in a way to sort of like shift what are considered norms, right? Is that fair to yes, say? Like, big, well, aside from his persuasion and everything, it's also just like, in Jordan wanted to be a player. He wanted to be the yes. best player, but he wanted to play within the game as it was pre-established. This is all stuff I understand only because I watched The Last Dance. There is a, Whereas LeBron yeah. is just like, Here's what I think basketball should be, and I'm LeBron, and everyone listens to me, so I can change. There's that. a famous photo uh, from, I believe it was the off season where LeBron signed with the Heat. That's referred to as the banana boat photo. Yes, yes. which is yes. LeBron, Carmelo, and Chris Paul. David had to explain this to yeah. me because and Dwayne, we Dwayne. went to the game. It's, it's, it's post Heat, but it's yeah, 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 yeah. it's, it's but in this. Wasn't year. the banana boat crew at the game that we went they, to? We, well, we went to the game we went to for our episode was Dwayne Wade's last game, and so I believe. They were all there. LeBron and Melo were certainly. I can't remember if Chris Paul was there as well. But the right. banana. The boat crowd was going crazy. Was they to, took to the court, to, and I didn't know what was going on. David had to go. Like, it's the banana move. boat crew, and I was like, "That sounds fun to me. Tell me about this banana you're boat." Right, right. they're but, on a but, boat, yeah. and that's what is. It, it, it's twofold, which is I think what you're talking about. Which is first, LeBron has used his social influence, uh, has cultivated social influence, and yeah. then used it to help team build. But then also has really marketed that element right sure. of like i'm the i'm sort of the don of the nba the these guys are my like you know sort of uh you know counsel you, know, you sort of you, you know, these guys are under my wing well here's a pin i want to return i want to place here because i i'm, I'm going to keep on going back to this over the course of the episode the thing it reminds me of a little bit is the way The Rock has collected other global movie stars who hustle as hard as he is. Mm. And it's like, mm. Kevin Hart, you do five movies with me and also you do these cameos. Ryan Reynolds, you're now in The Rock but fold. But here's the difference. Yeah. LeBron is actually the best at basketball. I, I, whereas I The accept Rock that. is not. I accept that. The Rock is pretending he's I everyone's that. favorite. I accept right. that. But business model wise, it's the same. And when you talk about like, what is LeBron's vice? And I don't cast aspersions when I say this because I understand that LeBron is the best in his field of what he does. And also, I respect him as a person. Like, I do think he has done undeniably good things in many areas of his life, right? Uh, as someone who knows fucking nothing, I'm even aware of that. Um, but I think his two vices are uh, power. He's got that thing that feels very uh, emblematic of celebrity today, where it's like, you need to constantly be doing more and more. You need to be disrupting different areas. You need to have your fingers in 18 different pots. You can't just be the best at what you are doing, whatever your chosen field was. You have to also invest in Blaze Pizza. You have to have an overall deal at a movie studio, not just make a Space Jam sequel, right? You need to be developing, show, like all this sort of shit. I also think his other vice is he really wants to be liked in a way I would argue Michael Jordan did not. Sean Fennessy had a very good tweet about this where he mm. was like, the fundamental difference between the Space Jams is that LeBron 
thinks a lot about how people perceive him. I'm going to misquote He's, this. I can read it. And it Jordan is, LeBron is concerned with being beloved. I think that's true. I don't I don't know that Jordan wanted to be loved. He did. I think he wanted to be admired mm, and idolized. He made a Bugs Bunny movie, though. You know what I mean? But like for all of, his badass, they had to talk him into that. That's yeah, the well, other. He thing. still did it. And I will say, I will say that it, it, it's kind of an interesting jumping off point, also to the performances, because yes. Jordan's performance in the first Space Jam <laughs> carries what you're talking about with it, which is throughout the whole film, he's kind of like. What is this? What's this bunny doing? Right. <laughs> how did I end up here? Right. Do you know how to play basketball? <laughs> yeah. Which is the, the LeBron's performance is sort of the opposite, which is I'm in this. Yeah. And I'm trying to sell every line. He's every working story, much every, harder yes. at, to Certainly. far lesser results. Now, this was the LeBron point I wanted to get to. Okay. I think that's like a key difference. And I, I'll say another difference is that like Michael Jordan is a movie star, even though he only made one movie. It's one of those things, and Last Dance proved this again, where it's like, that guy's just so compelling on camera, right? There was a reason he was so successful as an ad pitchman. It's not just that he's, like, absurdly handsome, but he just had whatever that fucking thing was, right? Where, like, certain very pretty people who cannot deliver a line convincingly on screen still become a movie star because they are just engaging to watch. And Jordan had that energy, and LeBron, I don't think, has the same natural performer energy where it's like, he's a likable guy, He's been compelling in different things on camera. Yeah, he's good in train wreck. But he's not he's, as like know. innately just kind of like holy fucking shit, right? Just standing there. Uh, I, which I'm not saying it's a physical appearance thing. I'm saying it's that weird charisma that comes through the camera or doesn't. Kind I don't of thing. disagree with any of this because I don't think he's good in the movie because nothing is good in the right. movie. But I just felt bad for him watching this I feel movie. bad for him too. I because don't, I, think I, he's, I think he's terrible in this. I don't necessarily I don't blame him. I think he's terrible. So I think he's terrible. Bring your brain. Oh, that's the telephone. All right. Let's see who's on the other end. Click. Hello. Oh, hello. I'm so distressed. I'm really, I'm really losing it. It's one of our more taciturn callers. Occasionally we get a quiet caller, a little more monotonal. What are you talking about? This monotonal. is Larry Bird, one of your greatest ad readers. It's, a, it's Larry Bird, Larry the legend. I'm losing my mind, David. I'm spinning out of control. Are you? Are is it because of the recent drama at the Pacers, the team you 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 help run, where you had to fire the coach? Is that what it is? Absolutely not. It's because I watched Space Jam: A New Legacy, and I haven't been able to sleep since. Too too, too good. Wished you were in it. What's the issue? No, are you kidding me? You watch that thing? It's dog shit. It, it's not great. It's not the best. It's it's not. I'm it's happy not I'm not in it. I, I'm glad. I, I mean, I'm I'm you know, miles away from that nuclear testing site. I mean, you are briefly, of course, in the original Space Jam. Hey, not that brief. I got some good lines in it. You do. You got some fun lines. David, this isn't a time to review my career as an actor, though. We all know I'm dynamite on screen and on the mic. The point is, I, I can't sleep. I'm tossing and turning. I'm running around in circles. I need something to calm me down, David. How... Can you help me sleep? I feel like Detective Dormer in Insomnia. Let me sleep, David. Look, you're a man with famous back trouble, and I want to get you of help course. on this front. I knew that. I know that as well as anybody. Uh, and when you have a purple mattress, listen, you can sleep cool and comfortable no matter what the world throws at you, Larry, including uh, back trouble in the early 90s and Space Jam A New Legacy. Wow, David, I'm overjoyed by this news. I'm jumping up and down. I'm s I, I've never been happier. Listen, Larry, lot, there's a lot of mattresses out there, but only purple mattresses have, quote, the grid. And that is not a digital frontier. I was going to uh, say, that's what Tron scares Legacy. me. No. Because it sounds like that's the, the digital frontier from Tron Legacy, which for me is too similar to the serververse, which is what's given me these frights. You don't want to mess with a virtual world, I understand. No, the grid for purple, it's just a unique ventilated design that lets air flow through the mattress to help you sleep cool even when it feels like a thousand degrees out. And it's hot today, Larry. I don't know about where are you in Indianapolis or wherever you are, but in New York, it's hot. David, can you go back to the thing you said about the air? Okay, it's got a unique ventilated design that allows air to flow through to help you sleep cool. Well, I've heard of Air Jordan, but Air Mattress? Okay. Well, unlike memory foam, which remembers everything, Larry. I remember everything. Bounces, I, had to, 
I had to remember eight separate lines in the original Space Jam. Well, exactly. And you did a great job. But you're that's not what you want from a bed because the, the grid is going to bounce back as you move and shift. You never get that I'm stuck feeling that you might with memory foam, you know? Bill, it's not going to happen. Remember that line? It's vaguely. You're talking to Bill Murray, right? Right. And he's saying, you know, with the recent pandemic, the NBA is going to have to look for exciting new talent. And I say, Bill, it's not going to happen. Well, look, I've gotten this squishy purple uh, mattress, you know, uh, sampler just to, to sort of that highlights the grid design. It's very soft. It's very comfortable. For the listener at home, David is squishing his hand. He's doing some squishing. And Larry, you can try a purple mattress risk free. Risk free. There's free shipping. There's returns. Financing is available. I don't need that, but it's nice to know it exists as an option. I saved money. I've been responsible with my earnings. You have that vibe. Okay, so Purple is comfort reinvented. Right now, you're going to get 10% off any order of $200 or more if you go to purple.com slash check10 and use promo code check10. That's purple.com slash check10, promo code check10 for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Purple.com slash check10, promo code check10. Terms apply. Thank you for uh, listening to that, Larry. You're welcome. It was a privilege. And I went from being in what your listeners, I think, could tell was clearly a manic episode at the beginning of this ad read. Yeah, you were so worked up. To now just, once again, jump it for joy. Well, uh, it's nice to hear from you, Larry. Always. Good job dodging the uh, Space Jam 2 bullet. Yeah, right? I mean, I survived two horrible threats in the last 18 months. COVID-19 and Space Jam 2. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Goodbye, Larry. I, I'm going to go on a side tangent, but it's going to tie back. I, I really have a point here. I think he's incredibly good in Trainwreck. And that was yeah, the moment good. where yeah, that movie right. comes out. I rewatched a lot of his scenes on YouTube recently. They're the best parts of that yes, mediocre absolutely. movie. Right. And like, it was one of those things where it was like, okay, now we're like eight years away from this. Let's rewatch this away from the hype and see like, was this fucking Diddy and get him to the Greek where everyone was like, oh my God, Diddy's amazing this. And it's like, no, Diddy's 5% better than you thought he was going to well, be. Well, isn't it this. sort of a Timberlake moment? That was the, that was my question. That's why right. I want to rewatch it. Is it just like, it. hey, he's charming. Like, he must be amazing. Yeah. Right. Right. The, right. the super inflation. Of, I, right. I think LeBron is genuinely very good. And I was also watching outtakes and his improv riffs were really fucking good. And not just that they were funny, but they were like in the scene. He was emotionally invested. He would like respond to Bill Hader appropriately, all that sort of shit, which gets to this thought. Side tangent. A couple years ago, I was at a party at some fucking movie cocktail party thing. And uh, one of the guys there, uh, David, look it up because I'm going to forget his name, was the guy who wrote 48 Hours. I think he shares the screenplay credit with Walter Hill, but it was his script originally. Uh, uh, sure, it's, uh, his name is uh, Larry Gross? Yes, yes. exactly. Yeah. Uh, and I went up to him because I fucking love 48 Hours and I love early Eddie Murphy. And I wanted to ask him questions about that because Eddie Murphy is like 19 in that movie. That's the thing that makes him a star. I'm so fascinated Eddie Murphy having this like absurd movie star career that will never be replicated again. Asking him like, what, what was that like? And he gave me like a fucking two hour monologue that was just a uh, catnip, right? But the thing he said was, uh, I forget who the movie was written for. And they dropped out. They were looking for somebody. Eddie Murphy had just started popping on Saturday Night Live because the first half of that first season, they don't really use him. And there's the famous moment where the show is running short. They send him out. He does stand up and overnight he becomes a success and then the star of Saturday Night Live and saves the show. Um, he's now the hot guy. Paramount suggests they hire him to do this movie. They hire him. He shows up. He's shitting the bed. As Larry Gross put it, for the first couple weeks of filming, he is sucking. He just like doesn't know how to act. He's very uncomfortable. He's like a stand up. He can be sketch. He can play out to the crowd. But to be in a scene and be present, and listen to someone, play the stakes of it. He's not doing it. He's dead and he's not funny. Right. And then the one scene they shoot, I think two weeks in, and they were like about to shut down the movie, go for reshoots, whatever. The one scene they shoot is the famous scene that makes Eddie Murphy a movie star where they go into the bar and he asks Nolte for his badge and they go into this redneck bar and Murphy pretends that he's the cop and For's just the best take scene in the movie. command of the room. And right. it like lit up. Everyone's electrified. And then they go like, okay, let's go watch the dailies and figure out what the fuck is going on. And Gross and Hill watch everything they have and they're like, I got it. Murphy is activated because it's a jump ball. 
This is why I'm, I'm bringing this up here, okay? He's like, that scene's a challenge to him. There are people he's playing off of. There's a thing he's got to overcome. When he's in a scene where he's just playing the straight man or he's playing the wild guy, but it's wild in opposition to nothing, he doesn't know what to do. He's 19. He hasn't intellectualized his talent yet, right? But what he needs is the activation of the confrontation. And so they rewrite the whole movie and go, every fucking scene needs to be a jump ball. Nolte has to be challenging him in every scene. Murphy as an actor has to feel like there's something for him to overcome. We need to onset, create the, the sensibility of Nolte's a far more established actor than you. He's going to act circles around you. You have to fucking prove us wrong. And they do that and they rejigger the whole movie and it fucking works and he becomes a movie star, right? I think Trainwreck is a jump ball for LeBron. I think he's on a set with all these funny people. He's not trained in comedy. He has to hold his own in scenes with Bill Hader. Yep. He is activated by the fact that he's improvising, that he has to be thinking strategically. I, I get everything that you're saying. Skin in the game. Versus this, where now people have told him, you were good in that movie, just play LeBron. Well, but also, this movie is dog shit. <laughs> it is. Like, it's but, written like shit. But, it's stupid. It's yeah. about Horrible. algae rhythm. Like, Horrible. But like, he cannot, I feel like, pull off the most basic emotions and scenes. Well, all right, no. I, I, no, I, here's my oh, counter to that. No one could save this script. No one. No one could save this, but no you one. could give a more functional performance. It would not... Save this movie. I don't really think I have so. two thoughts. First of all, and we said this after we watched, Griffin and I saw the movie together. I don't know if you said that, but he's better at the comedy in this movie than he is the drama. You said to me, he's pulling off 30% of the comedy and none of the drama. Yes. I, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. I agree with that. And then and on the drama side, David, you were just saying, can we really blame right. LeBron for I, I this? Think, I, I think, don't know if we can, but to the extent that we can, I, blame I, would, I would question the fact that, again, this is LeBron's movie. Maybe it would have helped him play off the drama if he would have included anything that tacks in any way onto any secure, uh, insecurity yes, insecure. or well, issues he's had in his life. Instead, it seems to be a completely made up storyline where he won't let his son, you know, get into coding. I mean, we were talking yeah. about maybe like even if the storyline with the son had been more and they reference this a little bit later in the movie, but more geared towards uh, the obvious conflict of LeBron grows up with very little he works sort of his way to the top. Alludes to it. Alludes like, to it, I had but to work not, so hard. But it's really right, not what yeah. it's about. The last with the sun. fifteen minutes of the movie, well, and, and he mentions and I've, it and I've heard a, LeBron you know, in interviews talk very earnestly about the court? difficulty of raising kids who now have so much money, right. and also his name and all of this stuff. Right. And like th that's a conflict. Yeah. That I'm not saying LeBron would have been amazing, but I imagine he might have been able to play it off a little better than he did. His son being a genius video game this designer the and greatest of all <laughs> okay, time. Look, this is the movie's huge problem. I was saying this before off my put it right. The son is obviously should be making video games. He's clearly good at it. <laughs> there is a point in the beyond movie. Beyond good. He's right. beyond good. He's obviously yeah. good. There, He's a fucking nerd. <laughs> like he made a video game. There, well, David, beyond that, there are a couple points in this movie that I think fundamentally break it. One of them is you see that he went with his dad to some fucking all-star game training and had some device hooked up to his iPhone he that he was used to scan the players Damian Lillard, and make cap, mo yes. cap them into it, right? And at that moment, you go, oh, this is a kid who loves video games and programming. His game's impressive. He bought some expensive device to scan. An hour later into the movie, Algy Rhythm says, I'm going to be able to suck human beings into the audience because of your scanning technology implying that Dom James is the one who built this fucking device and created his Look, own proprietary he, right. technology. CCP level. To you know, yeah, people yeah, off of a fucking yeah. iPhone. This kid's a billionaire. Here's the problem. <laughs> it's, not, it's not even about that. Deep into this movie, Algae Rhythm loudly explains. Please like, call him Mr. Rhythm. Algae says... If we win the game, if you say if you win the game, you get to go home. And if I win the game, I will like delete the Looney Tunes and you're you're my prisoners forever. All of these human civilians in the stands right. are are stuck here in the exactly. server for me. To what end? LeBron, why, why does that do anything for LeBron you? LeBron goes to see his son. Yes. This should be the moment where his son's like, well, you know what? Fuck you, because like you didn't let me, you know, like where there's anger there. Instead, it sounds like, what are you talking about? It's just like some fun game. Just go enjoy yourself. Like, come on, we're well, going to play well, basketball. Well, a, a there's no stakes yeah, no at stakes. all. His son no is stakes. not aware no of stakes. the drama. No stakes. And then at the end, he's like, hey, Algae Rhythm's mean. I'll go hang yeah. out with you. I, That's I think it. The, like, the, you know, because Algae yeah. Rhythm is mean. The he's biggest mean problem man. with this movie is LeBron has 
basically like shitty and inscrutable motivations. Yeah. And the ancillary characters have no motivations. Yeah. Like it, particularly even just a small thing like the basketball players themselves who then have their talents co-opted. In the first Space Jam, it's done really well. I mean, the scene yes. with... They're Muggsy, all, Muggsy with his shrink and all this plot. stuff, and they don't have in the yeah. hospital. It's yeah. arguably the like, funniest stuff yeah, in the yeah. movie. Yeah, stuff. Charles yeah, Barkley right, getting right. a basketball thrown at him on a park, and and some but kids like, saying you can't play. These like, aren't those players. These are weird digital monsters based off of those players who have no internal lives. Right. Like, even and the nerd looks had <laughs> fucking motivation. The nerd looks had stakes. Uh, yeah, but it, this doesn't. This has to be because of the way the movie's made, right? Where they're like, shit, we don't have time to actually bring these. But people they're in, in the movie, though, David. I mean, but they. Kind of like seconds. actually done the mocap, right? It's just no, 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 no. Right. But even it's if you CG. gave, but but even if you get like to the extent that they are physically in the film, yes, they are. They in don't the film do anything. No, they, they don't. don't do they have anything. no. But I'm saying yeah. like, don't you think like maybe there was a world where they were gonna have a B plot, and then it's like shit. We fired the director. The NBA season starting soon. We th- just have them be cartoons. Well, there's also as well, this famous right? thing. Uh, famous. There's this noted thing that they. Uh, had a really tough time getting any players to do this because of conflicting shoe deals. Absolutely. That, that, that was like, never, it was never going to happen. Right? Players who had different shoe deals were not allowed to do this film because of LeBron's... Uh, Except for Clay. Clay does it because he has the Chinese shoes. Remember, he has the, he's, that's his sneakers, the uh, Chinese shoe company. I forget what they're called. Oh, okay. Um, but you know, he's obviously, got his own company. Is that no, he's Clay is like endorsed by a Chinese sneaker company. I need to look it up. Now. That's Anta. smaller and not a competitor. But is that, he also that, endorsed by Nike? Additionally, no. It's he. But like Anta is obviously just like, hey man, whatever. Yeah. You, <laughs> yeah. you want to be in a movie, but sure. like you can't get Harden. You yeah. can't get yeah. um. You know Durant. Well, is Durant Nike? Who's Durant? I think Durant is Nike. Yeah, Durant is definitely Nike. So Durant's so just like her. fuck you. But yeah, Durant. Would but you can't get Steph because he's Under Armour. You yeah. can't get Harden because yeah. he's Adidas or whatever. Like right, yeah. you can't get those guys. But, but, but by the way, I mean, one of the cool things about the first Space Jam is like it's not like they were like, oh, is Sean Bradley Nike? You know what I mean? No, they well, got everyone, interesting players. It, it was not but, just an uh, purely Nike a branding had a stranglehold exercise. back then too, though. Yeah. Everyone was Nike back then. Now yes. all these people yes. have wormed in. But I'm just saying they did not pick the. They could have picked players with no signature shoe deal as well, and it could have been this interesting is, if they were the right well, type of but character. This is another interesting yeah. thing they did. And like James, you and I w- walked around for a little bit after the movie, and we're talking about stuff and sh- rough drafting our thoughts for this episode, whatever. And you just kept on. You'd say like the thing the original Space Jam gets right, and I can't believe I keep on trying to like talk about the original Space Jam like it's the Maltese Falcon. Like you're like right. it yeah. makes the original Space Jam look like a script that should be studied for its perfection. Well, I watched, in terms of the bare minimum shit it gets right. I watched the first Space Jam after watching the second Space Jam, and it really like, first of all, it felt like a warm bath in comparison sure. to the to the second one. But but it's like a pleasant but it did movie give, in comparison to as this, much which as is I so in your face. Always enjoyed the first Space Jam. It gave me a lot more appreciation for what it's able to pull off. Just like basic hack. Hollywood screenwriting where it's like you have someone say this in the first act and it happens in the third but, act. But they but the first Space Jam was able to fit all of this stuff yeah. into a formulaic Hollywood movie, which is not right. ne- maybe not so easy. Well, th- this was the other thing I was going to say. Like, with the Monstars and the Nerd Lux and whatever, right? Like, A, you set up the Nerd Lux as a character. You know what's going on there. Then you set up the players in the real world, Right. Then they steal them. And in terms of the selection of the real world players, you have like Ewing and Barkley are like a big fucking A tier guys. Right. But then part of their like decision making after that is like Sean Bradley, you want a guy who's really tall. Muggsy Bugs, you want a guy who's really small. Like they're casting based on the visuals of what the cartoon monsters are going to be later in the thing. It was going to be George Mears on first. Like they were thinking about this of like, Having distinct, well, because also because it's a basketball movie, right? They wanted them to play as right. opposed to this one where they don't really want anyone to play. They just want it to be this. It's a video game. It's an abstract. And even within, we were talking about this. One of the frustrating things about this movie is even with even knowing it's a video game, there are no rules to the video game. Right? They don't outline any sort of co- competitive, There's some sort of power up element. They do but, not explain. But also, you know, the style sometimes style points. You right. don't know what. The, it, like even if it's style points, you have no idea. Like. You know, There's no internal metric. What that a lead you can is, follow. yeah. Right. What's what's but what's like what? even the barrier. It's like, can you bounce the ball off it, or do people just run into right. it and then <laughs> like get it. electrocuted? It like, yeah. There's right. so much logic that just doesn't make sense with how the game works. But David, like you talked me through this at one point mm. where it's like, oh, the the nicknames, the forms right. they have are based on this kind of thing or whatever, mm, right. right? In terms of how it actually like plays into the film, it's kind of irrelevant, right? 
like the the real players that these are based on kind of have nothing to do with anything. Pretty much. And uh, on wet fire, that guy that's not his deal. Well, he's, he's one not, of the Slash not, brothers. He's one of the oh, so, what? what is what is that? Exactly. Exactly. Well, no, okay. I will say, James, back me up here. Everyone who remotely cares about the NBA knows about the Splash Brothers. Yes. I think the problem no, no, uh, but I, I, I think the problem that the Splash that, Brothers. I'm rolling my eyes at that being the reason why the character is wet fire. There's no, nothing no, no. else you can do with Clay but Thompson. The other, I think the problem is not it's that clay. like the, yeah, it is clay. <laughs> I, I, Clay Thompson is famous for when a, uh, a, a what was it? What's it? scaffolding, scaffolding. collapse? This is incredible. In if New York City, this, you go no. he was caught by like New York One or some local TV station being like not knowing that he was Clay Thompson. He was like in town for yeah. a game and they were like, what happened here? And he was like, well, it looks like the structural integrity. <laughs> and he like seemed to know the sort of specifics yeah, of how that. scaffolding and, and works. And by, the, and by the way, it was yeah. not at all like, you know, giving that look of like, like, are like, you, do you know who right. I am? He's like, he was just look, like here's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Here's what happened. And he's like, I, I, you know, he's like look, incredible. it's always a concern when you're walking he's, right. sort of, <laughs> he's kind of like famously dry. That's yes, why. Yes, so he's yes. a little tough to. I famously dry. Well, and him wet. Well. It sounds well. like they got it wrong. The problem is not that he's wet fire or anything like that, or that people don't and know what that means. The problem is that no part of Clay Thompson's basketball game has anything to do with the game that they Thank play. Thank you. No, Same with you. Anthony Davis. <laughs> no. Same with Thank you. And, 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 Anthony I, Davis at least has wingspan, I but will they don't, say. It, it doesn't I'm come aware. into play. Oh, that, how do we score over this? This is my wingspan. larger point. This is my larger point. <laughs> I understand whatever fucking in-jokes these personas are riffing on, but they're all kind of irrelevant, and their personalities don't really come into play. The only guy where I would argue actually has any impact on the game is Kronos, right? Where they're like setting up this fucking thing of him fucking with time. Otherwise, all the powers they have are just like, well, I don't know. The game is rigged. They can't win anyway. This doesn't make them better or worse players in its own bizarre way. Well, the Looney Tunes are also like fucking beholden to no rules. Th this you know? is an honest question. I mean, I know that there's some part of this movie that is just a sign of the times in that like, okay, it's like, yeah, we included like video games and like a lot of little sound bites. And it's sort of, there is something very like uh, modern internet about the way the, yeah. like, the short bursts are going. But is is also what it's saying that like young people actually don't really care about basketball yes. either? Yes. Yeah, Fundamentals. Because, but, or, or not the fundamental. What not happened even, to the fundamentals? <laughs> but that is true. Okay. Yeah. Look, again, I can't believe I'm the defender of the stupid logic of this movie. That is true. All, they're always complaining about how basketball players spend too much time playing basketball video games now and obsessing over their 2K rating right, yeah. and all that. But like fundamentally right. The conflict, the only way I could zero in on the latter half of this movie, because I was truly like desperate by the latter. You saw this in a screening room, right? I saw it in, in the AMC yeah. Lincoln Square okay. in a screening. Yeah. You is, did. I just want to say, because you told me, and it's funny, uh, this was your first movie back from paternity leave. This correct. was your first this movie your first day in back. six months, yes. right? Yeah. And it like shows up in your work Slack or the spreadsheet, whatever they put in. They put you in to do Space Jam. Right. And you reach out to Warner Brothers and go like, hey, I, they want me to do Space Jam. And their response was like, there's a screening in two hours. If you can make it great, if not, you don't get to see the movie. Like Warner Brothers was so uninterested in critics seeing this by and large. They were kind of like, it's Monday or whatever, <laughs> like nothing. You're yeah. not going to get a link. But wasn't it yeah. same day they were like, you have same to be day. able it was to that, get there It was today. that day. It was that yeah. day. Yes. They had one screening. But in the latter half of the movie, the moral of the story, right, is like he should stop trying to teach the Looney Tunes, how to like screen and roll, right? He just he needs to let them to all be have LeBron. fun. Like this, he needs to let everyone be who they are. This game is designed for people to have fun, so he needs to loosen up, right? And like, so I of course thought of his famous tweet to Kevin Love, where he did not say Kevin Love's name, but you know what I'm talking about. Mm. Some players need to either fit in or fit out, right? Mm -hmm. Which he tweeted the first year, and everyone was like, tweet. "LeBron is fucking playing mind games with Kevin Love, his new teammate on Twitter. Like, yeah. what is this?" where clearly LeBron was like, I don't get this guy. He's casual. He's not like me. He's not like hyper competitive. He's right. Like that was mm -hmm. sort of the underlying thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And Kyrie too. Like he was also pissed off at Kyrie. Yeah. I probably, uh, and knowing what we know now, uh, had a less of a read on Kyrie as we right. all do, you but know, think, as like, Kevin he, Love, I think he really like pinpointed as like, this guy is like, got a touch. You know? He was like, I don't yeah. understand. Yeah. Like you're here, you're with me. We could win a title. Like how, right. And right. like, and it, clearly what happened with that team was like LeBron came in and was like, I am LeBron James, God of basketball. I have two rings now. I, you know, doesn't everyone want to listen He's to me? King. Yeah, I'm the king. I just went, it was yeah. just in Miami. I was just under Pat Riley, like learn. Now I'm here to tell everyone about how basketball works. And everyone's like, huh? Shut well, up. there's also the famous moment where 
LeBron said something about uh, being sort of like a father figure to Kyrie, right. and they so interviewed Kyrie like, about uh-huh. it. He's like, "I have a dad." <laughs> right, right, <laughs> that, that right. Kind of rolls. Yeah, yes, yeah. and like LeBron, I think has acknowledged like he did have to learn to be like, okay, people don't just want to like hear my drops of wisdom and like hear how to play the game. Right, for but me. by the way, I feel like this movie is kind of like doing a very similar fucking thing to the audience honestly about like yo right. i'm lebron like sit down two hours of lebron let me tell you about all the great shit i did in my career <laughs> in my life to let go and let someone else <laughs> yes. construct that narrative around him in a way he would not have the perspective to do right can i also say i mean talking about all of this like the main image i think of with lebron now and i know it's recency bias and also this is someone who like doesn't follow sports and only sees these things when they go viral on twitter but the famous fucking photo of LeBron like this to his teammates to after Jair they Smith. fucked up the play. Well, mm. it was, to be fair, maybe the worst, <laughs> the, the worst individual. It was. I, I have watched the clip. It's, it's the only it's, basketball it's, it's footage horrible. I've watched in the last 10 years. Even I understand that's a horrible play. Because like it wasn't just that. It was LeBron had just given the most magnificent yes. performance yes. any basketball player had ever given. Sure. He had defeated Steph Curry. And, and their margin for error in was that. Nothing. It was nothing. It was non-existent. I mean, they, they could not have even JR. like, and then for JR to just basically like, Go yeah. Like, huh? And then yeah. be like, oh, I didn't. And, but, and LeBron's clearly like, now I have to defeat <laughs> Steph four more times. Right. I just beat him and you lost it. But that's like the amount of emotion in yes, the photo. It was incredible. Right? He's so expressive yes. in that photo. It like yes. tells such a complete story. And the fact that that is directed at his own team mm-hmm. you are correct that that's what this movie should dramatically be and digging kind into kind of like you know because like he's leading on the tunes and then eventually he realizes like i need to loosen up with them much as i do with my but own you know son. what like, Dave, that's it's the, the only it's arc the same that's in the thing movie. it does with the son it's the same thing it does first of all with like you know uh leaving the leaving cleveland mm-hmm. it's the same thing it does um with the son like not having to work for things where it's like it doesn't set any of it up and then it just references it, it just in the yes, second half right. once. Yeah, like, uh, right. and it's like, that's enough. They, they, re- they reference things in resolving them that they have not properly set up within right. the confines of a, the movie. A god-awful it's movie. A fucking, I mean, fundamentally. Right, like, it's, it's a bowl it's of dumb so piss. shitty, right? <laughs> but, 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 like, but, like, here's a good example, right? I feel like, I mean, you said this, James, watching it. Like, uh, there were a lot of comments you, you kind of turned to me in the movie as you were, like, doing the math in real time. Yeah. And I think you said this during the film where you were like, you realize what a difference it makes that you're actually seeing like a court in the original movie. Yes. Both in the yes. training totally. and in the yes. final totally. game. That it's like, a, a, I find something weirdly claustrophobic about the visual of the final game where it's like green grass around all of them and people standing right on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. It feels more hermetic and like, it feels more like a green screen, even though it is in theory a more expansive, deeper sort of digital background that they've created versus it being like in an arena. But also that when LeBron's training them, he's training them in Marva the Martian's spaceship. They're not playing on a court. The original movie has shit where they're like, they get this fucking Acme like gymnasium, right? And they're like working shit out and you get the sense, even though it's not some fucking Rocky Four training montage, that Jordan has like really worked to try to get the tunes into shape. Well, and right. when they show up, they're good. Like they're good at right. what they do. And they're playing the game of basketball where if you score a basket, it's two points. Right. Not this and the even though the rules are a little different. Right. Yeah, and still, you can stretch you know, or and, whatever. And the other right. thing, the other thing I, uh, the monsters I'm, also aren't super powered. This is another right. thing. They're really big and they're, they're right really big. mean yeah. and they're very tough. Right. But they don't have cartoon powers. Looney Tunes are able to later come in with the cartoon powers and use them to their advantage. Right. Well, well, and the other thing that we talked about too is that the villain in the first Space Jam is sort of like this Kim Jong-il figure. Huge who, connection. Who, Thank who, you, James. Who, James yes, he's up. evil yes. and wants to connect people, but he wants to do it because he, he like cares about like basketball and like wants these people to play basketball for him There's a basis for the rest in of reality. their lives. As insane right. as it is, Swackhammer actually like no, but there is a basis in reality for algae rhythm, but well, it's a it's a more it? chilling. It. Well, it's just cause algae rhythm is like, look, I have solved culture. Right. I am the algorithm. I have decided that if LeBron went to fucking Hogwarts, that would be good. Yes. And when he's told no, he's like, 
All right. Of course, but the, prove it the, to but, you. The, but the basketball <laughs> angle has nothing to do with it. And and that's the thing. Basketball has nothing to do with it. That's So then just take them. Like, right. you know, right. like why do you, why are you playing this game of basketball? Like you understand in the first one at least there's some like yes. okay the game of basketball is like there's some res- reverence for the game of basketball where it's like okay if we can beat them we can have them you know what I mean? Whereas like algae rhythm like just still if you want to delete these fucking people what's stopping you? you you're completely you know it doesn't, you, make, it it doesn't make any sense. Don't <laughs> <laughs> they delete you anyway. Listen, I've heard that if you say server verse twenty times <laughs> it becomes a thing. It becomes a thing. Okay, it's also so. just bananas that I mean and I'm sure millions of people. Reported this out, but the movie begins with LeBron being pitched this movie, and he's like, This is an awful idea. Oh, David, 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 I have to correct you here because this is my biggest gripe with the entire film. Mm-hmm. They do not pitch him this movie, they pitch him Warner's 3000, which is this stupid fucking service where they're saying, We have this whole catalog, yes, they will digitize him and then and we'll put, put him into, into pre existing yes, movies because your social media following is so big that right. that will like add value to our back catalog, right? Uh, Here's the biggest fucking question about this movie and the thing I I think that is ruinous in this premise. Because I think this is a cursed movie. I think trying to make another Space Jam is a bad idea. It doesn't make cultural sense. The only reason to do it, the only reason for this movie to exist is because LeBron is competing in his mind with the legacy of Jordan, right? That he feels like that's the thing I have to do to prove. I'm always going to be in conversation about who is the greatest of all time and what my influence is. And if I don't do this big cultural thing that Jordan did, He's going to have that up on me, right? I do think that, that it's sort of irresistible to him, right? Yes. Even though it's also kind of a like, right, can you possibly... The challenge of it. Well, it's yeah, the but, same but, thing right. as... Uh, w- uh, I was saying that it's sort of an, it, there's some, a real feeling of insecurity with this film. But it, it, David, do you remember after the... I believe it was after the Cavs beat the Warriors in the finals. Sure. LeBron was on the shop. Is it? Yeah. His, his, and his he HBO had that moment where show. he said like, I forget if he was talking about the block or just the win in general... And he sort of said, that was when I realized that I'm the greatest ever. And there was a, there was, it's like, whether or not that's true, you can argue, but there was such an insecurity to like feeling the need to come out and say yes. that, yes. that Michael Jordan never would have done. Right. Michael Jordan to this day still sort of laughs at the question of whether or not he's the greatest ever because he's, and I'm not just saying, oh, we love Jordan so much, but I think that also yes. comes through in the film. Yes. You know, it that but it's I, like. I will say, when did the last dance start? When did the wheels start moving on the last dance after the block? Michael Jordan definitely yes. smelled yes, it in the yes. air and was like, yes. I need to burnish my legacy again because now I'm the cartoon Hitler mustache shitty NBA no- owner <laughs> right. that I am. And I need to remind a whole new generation. Like, And it worked better than even he could have imagined. Yes, and right. you watch the last dance and you're like, wow, Jordan is... Such a fucking fascinating figure. And also, this guy is so good at being on camera. He's like, so good on camera. How yes. many fucking memes did the last dance the thing is, create? When there when let's imagine one day there's a LeBron last dance, like 20 years from now. Yeah. I do think he could be good on camera if he just actually let, let talk go. shit, you know? Yeah. Right. And maybe he will, yeah. like 20 yeah. years later, right? But there's something about the sort of I don't give a fuck Jordan thing. In both like timelines, so when you're watching yeah, the archive footage and the presentation, yeah. everything about him is captivating. Right, well, right. well, and that's a good point, too. Like we were talking about LeBron's, you know, sort of uh, CEO, entrepreneur mm-hmm. angle that he really sells. And I have no problem with LeBron making absolutely as much money as he possibly can. Yeah. But there's an important point to be made, which is Michael Jordan was never interested in that stuff and made Every bit as much money as LeBron. Yes. Well, and that LeBron is not, shame, LeBron's entrepreneurship thing, right. is not, yes, it's like, it's a way to make money, but it's also a way that he's presenting himself to the public. Like, like if, like, you yeah. can make, LeBron, I, I would, I think LeBron could make every bit as much money as he's made. Yeah. It, you know, with it, if he didn't care about that stuff at no, all. But it, right? it's that it, disruptor culture thing of like, I want to show that I can succeed yes. in every field. I want to do all this stuff, which yeah. also makes him too knowable. Like, we feel like we know too much about yes. this fucking guy. It, it's sort of true, but also like, if we saw a clip of LeBron, and the shop kind of has this, but even still, the shop is obviously, you know, <laughs> soft focus in its way. But like, if, if I saw LeBron like talking shit, it would be kind of like, oh, like, because yeah. I'm sure, of course, he does, right? Yeah. Like on the bus, right? Yeah. You'd well, be those, like, well, we never see this. Well, there are all right. kinds of stories also about how much LeBron disliked, not personally, but disliked Steph Curry. Well, LeBron clearly hated Steph yes. because yes. it was like, how can this guy who is clearly in every way worse than me yes. as an athlete? Yes. Not that he's, Steph is obviously great, like be beating me. Like, well, you well know. not just that, but I think LeBron also had this feeling of like, 
you guys really think this is this guy's exactly. better than me? Like, right. are you kidding like, this me? This is horseshit. This guy it's can like, shoot. Yes, but yeah. Objectively, right. obviously, you are a better basketball yeah. player than Steph Curry. But like that didn't, you know, Steph represented something completely different. He was accessible and kids love him. And it's like a kid can imagine shooting a basketball. He can't imagine being a 6'9 tree. And, and, that, like, and if you Steph, touch him, it's like a rock. Steph like, had the wholesome know? family thing that LeBron also had, which yeah, was a great, yeah, you know. but he was kind of a little more authentic with it or because, whatever because well, his of, kid was cute. And, yeah, and, you know, and also, and people always in the NBA have always, re- part of what they've presented about Steph is he grew up rich. Steph and he was rich, just this sort of son like, of a basketball sort of, player, yeah, preppy kind of. But, yeah. but doesn't this get back to the fantasy point where it's like LeBron wants to be beloved? In that LeBron, you constantly feel that he's thinking about how people view him, and he's frustrated by people who just kind of like are comfortable in their own skin and have whatever sort of adoration they have. Bring, 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 bring. Oh, okay. One more phone call. Hello. Click. Hello. Hello, who's this? Who's this classy man? David Beckham. David Beckham? Yes. Oh, my goodness. The famed footballer. Mm. Uh, I, I watched you play, you know, my, I, when, I, when you were 11, you scored the wonder goal against, when I, sorry, when you were 11, when I was 11, you scored the wonder goal against Wimbledon, against Neil Sullivan, and we talked about it for days in the playground. What do you mean? Why would you talk about it for days? Because I went to school in England. What? <laughs> I mean, you, we don't know each other. No, no, we don't. So I'm very confused. I don't know why you're. Though. Okay. Anyway, what's up, David Beckham? How are you doing? I saw you in the stands at the England game recently. I'm doing all right. I'm looking for a way to kick my summer off in style. Oh, interesting. You get you it. You are a famous clothes horse. Well, yeah, and, and you've and I kick. You, you, you kick the ball. So there are two like things Beckham. there. It's like if you were looking at the sentence on paper, there'd be two things to go off of that might lead you to David Beckham. Right. Yeah, famously, actually, you have a fairly high voice, but I think you're probably just being a little gruff with me just to sort of sound cool, right? I'm sorry, let me adjust my mic. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I saw that. Uh, anyway, look, uh, Bex, as yes, we all know, of that's course. your name. Yes. Um, and you're, you're now you own, a, I think, a soccer team in Miami. I Congratulations do. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, you. I know you like clothes. Mm. I know you like to look stylish. Yes. I want to tell you that Mack Weldon is so much more than just underwear, okay? What? They've got t-shirts, okay. polos, yes. button-ups, mm-hmm. shorts, okay. pants, All right. swims, Ooh. and so much more. Sounds good. I would It love, is good. For example, I could picture myself diving into Mack Weldon's swim line with trunk and board short options that are quick to dry and have four-way stretch fabric. Yes. Uh, if you're not in the pool... Mac Weldon's Maverick Tech Chino Short and Radio Short, Radius Short, those are perfect additions to your summer wardrobe. Hmm. They're going to keep you comfortable so you can power through your most active days. And they have a free loyalty program called Weldon Blue. Level one gets you free shipping for life. Level two, you just need to spend $200. You're going to get 20% off every order for the next year. Wow, that sounds incredible. It sounds like a great way to stay cool this summer and look great doing it with all new collections of men's essentials. From Mac Weldon. And for 20% off your first order, Bex, you visit MacWeldon.com slash check and enter promo code check. That's MacWeldon.com slash check, promo code check for 20% off. Mac Weldon, reinventing men's basics, much as you reinvented the free kick. Thank you for calling, David. Of course. This is I feel like the just a nice, pleasant, simple phone call. I do want to ask you for one additional piece of advice because you've been such a help with kicking into a new style. Uh, my agent just called. They're offering me a European football jam, a new legacy. Do you think I should Ooh, do it? I don't know, David. Have you seen Space Jam, a new legacy? Have you checked it out yet? No, but it made 32 million at the box office. It, so it, it seems look, it conclusively did. that means it's good, right? That's what people a are tweeting. A solid player. I, I think I would just throw that up on the old HBO Max before you do anything else. That's my only advice. Okay. Bye. The, you know, the first Space Jam sort of went back. In, what, what year did that come out? 96? 96. Okay, so it yeah. goes back in time a little to tell, to tell the baseball story, <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah, right. It's, and it's, it's, it's I think another huge thing. Well, that I, I'm sorry, but because I, I want to make sure I don't forget this. Another huge thing is, and Last Dance made me realize this timeline the way I never did before. He signs on to do Space Jam post baseball, pre rejoining the NBA. He right, has a right. lot of time to focus on that movie. They famously build him the court so he can like start getting in shape again. 
but he's not playing basketball professionally at the time he's working on the movie right. that he rejoins. He's dominant again. The movie occupies the space of like the dark age of Jordan being out of the NBA and comes back when he's triumphant. You yeah. know? Right. It's like the summer of his fourth time. And Whereas this, LeBron is animated for 70% of this movie because there's only so much time to, he can devote to this movie. But, you know, this, this it, movie sure. could have right. gone back in time as well and told a yes. different story about LeBron that was not sort of... It, 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 the story is, is firmly post-triumph. And right. there were, as there are with all athletes, road bumps in LeBron's mm -hmm. career that they could... You know, this could have been a post-decision movie Most or decision it, would be kind of interesting obviously you want right? him on the back of his heels in the way that jordan is i don't disagree with any of this again of course also the movie is dog shit it's the dog looney tunes stuff okay. is dog oh, this shit is my you know question. what i mean right? like, you know, like, there's other problems this is right? my question talking about fundamental curse uh, premise right. right when you get to the big scene where algae rhythm is pitching warner's 3000 sure right. and this ties into james's thing about Sarah like silverman's there Stephen young Young's academy there. award nominee Stephen young right uh, this gets back to James's question about like swack hammer feeling like there's a weird basis in reality there and you understand why the movie is about basketball. Beyond that, beyond that, right? The first Space Jam for as fucking sweaty a premise as it is, Very as funny. much as it's cooked in a lab by fucking advertising agents and whatever, right? They actually did like, like fuck, let's just like try to figure out how to justify this. Where there is the chain of logic of like, the Looney Tunes are beloved. They live in the center of the planet. They are known stars, but also they exist as living creatures, right? In their tune world, in the core of Earth. Swack hammers in space. His theme park is failing. They need an attraction. Kids like Bugs Bunny. Let's kidnap Bugs Bunny. Bugs uses his fucking Bugs logic, right. the way he's good at fucking tricking people. It, back to Elmer Fudd and Yosemite Sam to make the nerd Lux think that, oh, here's a rule book. You're not allowed to kidnap me unless you beat me in a game. What game? And there's the scene where all the fucking Looney Tunes huddle and they go like, they're short and they have little arms. Basketball. Right. We have to play them in basketball because we'll beat them. They steal the power. Now they're big and strong. What do we do? We kidnap Michael Jordan. You at least put it like, what the the, the paragraph I just said is insane and it's demented. Stupid. Right. It's but very, very But they stupid. went through <laughs> that indefensible, really. beat but they did, by yes. beat. I understand what you're they saying. They did the beat. Algorithm goes, I want to put you in old movies. LeBron says, that's a stupid idea. Right. He is correct. That's a horrible idea. <laughs> sure. It unfortunately feels like it's probably where the entertainment it's industry happen, is going the next right. 20 years. It's a horrible idea. Algorithm cut to Don Cheadle wearing a suit, right? Mm -hmm. Which later, when they're sucked into the serververse, Dom James go, why, goes, why is the computer a black man? No, no, no. LeBron says it. It's very funny. It's the, it's the only good it's joke. It's one of two laughs yes. I had. What's I, your second one? The Michael B. Jordan thing, maybe. Yes, that's good. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. That's the only yeah, good. That, that was, but no, when LeBron Sequence, said yeah. the computer's black, which is one of the few lines in this is that feels kind of tossed off or ad libbed or yeah. whatever. It's funny. It's funny. I, agree. I laugh. I agree. So why is the computer black? I agree. Now look, we see him inside the computer with Steve, who, by the way, I hate Steve. You don't like that guy? Uh, <laughs> well, what is what is he? Is I he like a plug? He's the Microsoft paperclip. I know, but like, but what is he physically supposed he to represent? To look like? Oh, I couldn't yeah. really. He's I'm got like, like two streams. He has like USB wiry, cable right. hands, but then his head looks like a light bulb. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't figure it he's out. He's got no personality. He's like Morph from fucking Treasure Planet. If yeah, Morph was he's like a blobby thing was, that makes a face. I right? hate him. I <laughs> he's hate not great. He's him. not terrific. I fucking despise him. I don't understand why he exists in this movie. Anyway, we get this like fucking five minute soliloquy from Algorithm just standing around inside of a serververse wearing like a Canadian tuxedo or whatever, <laughs> right? right? That spray painted silver talking to Steve. And I think to myself, why does he have a human form? What, who is he presenting this for? Why does he have a human form? And when they do the pitch meeting, he is represented as like an Al Hirschfeld style cartoon, right? And I'm like, this is who he should be. And then when the Jameses get sucked in, he's like, let me take a form that so you, you can relate to So you just have a logic more. problem with, right, why are we, it's because so Cheadle can go ham. That's the but reason. do the fucking big blue CGI yeah. face for one scene before they come in. My point is, this movie never, for me, answers the fundamental question, which, David, you said th he pitches Space Jam. No, he doesn't. This movie never even makes clear if the original Space Jam exists in this universe, which is a horrible, horrible decision because the best way to do this horrible dog shit premise of a movie is 
here's the algorithm. The algorithm yes, pretty is, pitch is actually Space Jam. Is theory. relativity media. Yeah. We yeah. have come up with a computer program that could come up with a hit movie, right? Sarah Silverman. Oh, fuck. I'm going to get fired. I need a hit. Computer. Type, 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 type. Paper printout. Do Space, Space Jam, Jam with LeBron. Most famous $2 billion, dollars, right? 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 Yep, yep. She goes in, pitches it. They bring in LeBron. And he's like, no thanks. Bad uh, idea. Why I would I do that? Do I'm that. gonna compete, right. I'll fail. Right? Right. right? Algorithm is personally wounded because algorithm, a computer, thinks he is an artist, which is actually getting to saying something about the fucking industry, which is like yes, you, you have to make creative decisions, not let a computer do it. This computer's like, how dare you insult my creation? Sucks them in and goes, You thought this was a bad idea, I'm gonna make you live it. Right. We're That's why you have Space to play Jam basketball. Too. Right. Right. The other part of this is the Looney Tunes are in the reject world, right? He fucking pulls the lever. I'll send you to the reject world. It's Toon World. They go there. So the Looney Tunes no longer live in the core of our Earth. A different reality. They have been You got this wrong in the... your review. People corrected you. You said they were yeah, on a different I, planet. I, I, They're I, not they're in the core of Earth. Yeah, yeah because the, the Space Jam has a different planet. And I was just like, aren't they on it? I That's more a mountain, though, my friend. That's I'm more a mountain. Yeah, I'm aware. Uh, I don't care. I'm going to be honest with I think you. you should care. <laughs> Um, this is your yes, Melania Trump but I, moment. But I do kind of like the, uh, or not like is too strong, but right. within They have been thrown into Warner Brothers' as like digital right. basement because it's like no one cares about the Looney Tunes okay. anymore, right? So, so there's something there because this is another thing. Bugs has no fucking arc in this movie. This is the worst Bugs Bunny has ever been in anything. Bugs Bunny is one of my to, five favorite movie stars um, in history. They kill him, so that was good when he they died. They kill him? And then he comes back five seconds later and he has somehow yeah. found a way to transfer over yeah, into Christ our world reborn. and nothing is explained. I guess you don't like Jesus Christ's plot arc, uh, Griffin Jesus Newman. Jesus Christ didn't exist on a server and then yes, rise did. in the... <laughs> yes, yes, he did. Fair Jesus point. Christ, what does he have to do? He's nobody. He gathers followers. Then he dies and then is Look, reborn as God. Wow. I guess you don't like the Bible. That, that's the other thing you need to is it's that you, you have the, the motivation for the Loon Tunes and then there right. has to be something LeBron is trying to like the, the idea that what LeBron is ultimately getting out of this is that yes. his son doesn't hate him. Right. Yeah. You know, like for, uh, I have a story. I'll tell the story. Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to tell the story. I'll, I'll tell it in a short way, which is after around the time right after the decision happened, mm -hmm. I was yeah. had just graduated high school. One of my friends uh, from high, one of my best friends from high school, her grandfather uh, owns a hotel or owned a hotel. Okay. Um, so, uh, we, you know, we were maybe going to go on a trip after we finished high school, a few of us, and uh, there were issues. And you said, why don't we just go to your grandfather's hotel and, and hang out there? Very, very privileged story. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so we go to the hotel, and this is right after the decision, and LeBron James has just decided to sign with the Heat. Mm -hmm. Big he, news. People are very Taking angry. Taking South Beach. Uh, people are... Wait, and looks up, confused. Ben? What's going on, Ben? Well, okay. I'm just... Let's see where it go. it's okay. going. People are, are really uh, criticizing LeBron. Mm -hmm. For the first a, time ever. For the first time. I mean, they had criticized, oh, he's, he hadn't won a title, but on a personal level, do for you the know, first time Do ever. you know about the decision as a TV special, Ben? As a TV special. He announced he was leaving a team and the way and he was gonna oh, go right. to a new and team. And he did it thing. as a one hour TV special that yes. was like an American Idol result show. All the yeah. Cleveland fans were so mad. How could you do this to us? It's yada, manipulative, yada, yada, yada. Right, it's so right, right, like right, right. grandiose, all the yeah. Okay. Uh so we, we we're at the hotel and we find out LeBron is staying there. This is where he's taken his yeah. post. Wait, let's wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait a second. Because I worked at that fucking restaurant where he at came the spot of, uh, the, after the announcement. Okay. In Connecticut, he drove right to it's, the it's fucking restaurant. It's on an early episode yes. of our show. You talk yeah, yeah, about it. An orange yeah, twist yeah, file. Okay. Which was so fucking crazy. Well, him and all his goddamn so this friends. Ties, this ties in perfectly because so then I guess, you know, uh, a few weeks after that, he decides to go on vacation. He's staying at the hotel we're staying at. So, you know, you find out LeBron's staying at your hotel. Obviously, you have some dream of like, yeah, like we're going to you know, maybe we're gonna, an elevator. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. And then sure enough, I'm not going to get into all the specifics because it's a long story. and doesn't have a huge payoff. But like we do get to interact with LeBron mm -hmm. and LeBron to like, you know, I guess it was like five random kids is incredibly like outgoing, mm -hmm. spends a lot of time like or not a lot of time, but Humor, quality you, you time got, sure. for LeBron James, like interacting with us. He was generous. He like, you know, bought us some like alcohol and stuff like that. Anyway, Jesus Christ. Yeah. LeBron got you uh, drinks when you guys were underage? Yes. I I'm think not saying that in a discerning way. I'm just saying that's I think cool we were, that like, you were like, hey, LeBron, can you buy I, us I a we six were, pack uh, if you give no, us I think, I think we were of age. We were of age at the time. 
in where we were. Okay. Oh, and right, I think right, LeBron right. Yes. had like you know, obviously bought in like had he bought had a lot like of ten bottles of vodka. Sure, and sure. he, and he, when he, he gave us like six of them or so. Sure. Well, who knows? Yeah. Anyway, the point. And I, I was and I don't LeBron know, going around the chill. street. Corner. He was not yeah. like, "Hey, kids, how you doing?" And then like you know. And I always away got the whatever. sense, and, and I don't know if I was putting this on him, which was also another factor because he was so reviled in a lot of corners at that time. That this was, and I don't know. Maybe even unconscious, but like LeBron was in a mode at that moment of really like just first of all trying to be like very nice to everyone, sure. but also you know when you're like famous like that and you're getting criticized, it, just exert your influence in as many small Positively. ways as po- right. as possible. He wants to be a leader. See, he wants to be an inspiration. Yeah. And see in these kids, areas. Yeah. You know, these like random little brats who were yeah. staying at this hotel, be like, "Wow, like that's amazing," you know? Which yeah. of course we were. Yeah. Um, and like to me, like that, like that's in, that. That's per- that's what this movie needs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like LeBron at this low point, and then you have these these tunes who are in some way in this tough spot. Which, by the way, the movie that- sets up that LeBron is like the biggest fucking Looney Tunes fan. Right. He's fourteen. Right. He's got a Looney Tunes backpack, right. and he's playing fucking Bugs Bunny on his Game on his Boy. Game Boy. Yep. And yeah. then when he meets Bugs Bunny, he's like, "Oh wow, Bugs Bunny, you know who I am?" Yeah. All this movie needs is the tunes and LeBron to meet each other yes. at a low moment for need both each other. of them. That's a big thing. Where they okay. need each other yes. and that they, you know, somehow by working together, they can come out on top. Right. And instead, it just doesn't do so that even a like little Bugs bit. Bugs is leveraging LeBron to draft all of the Looney Tunes but rather is, than... Yeah, this is my own no reason. Problem. He's just yes. there to get out. Like, right. Le, right. like Jordan... Yes, he's there. He like he's trying to get out. Yeah, but he also rediscovers his love That's for the, the game of basketball Bugs, by playing with the tunes. The tunes as a collective and Jordan both have their own motivations, their own stakes, yes. and their own arcs in the original film. Right. In this film, neither one has either. Right. Well, the tunes sort of just have to get famous again, but, right? But, like that's it. But right? David, once again, if this movie exists in a universe where the original Space Jam exists, and that's what Algorithm's pitching, you immediately improve it twenty five percent because this movie's just ripping off the Jason Siegel Muppets, where it's like, oh, they're all scattered. We have to go different places yeah, to get them right. together, right? Right. But when LeBron goes to Toon World, and the joke is Warner it's Brothers, yeah. it sucks. They don't know what to do with the fucking Looney Tunes, right? Right. right. Bugs is alone, Mm -hmm. has sort of gone crazy, but also is showing no vulnerability, no interiority. He's just doing classic Bugs Bunny bits. By the way, poorly timed and executed. I would say, right, the the none of them funny. There's the one moment where he's crying at the bar. That's about that's his vulnerable moment. It's also presented as a joke, like when Bugs Bugs Bunny Bunny. accepts an Oscar. You know what I'm saying? When he's like, "Oh, thank you, thank you." Like it's all. But I mean, like there is that. That's about it. Sure. I'm just saying. There's a version of this movie in which he gets sent, reject pile. You're in Looney Tunes world, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, Algae Rhythm has sent him there because the challenge is you have to remake Space Jam to right. prove me right. Right. And the Looney Tunes are like, Space Jam, that was the last time right, we were culturally we were relevant. Right. That was 25 years ago. And they're talking up like, I mean, we won that game. We're really good at basketball. And LeBron mm-hmm. is trying to train them and realizes they're bad at basketball. Michael Jordan carried that team. Mm-hmm. I really need to work them into fundamentals. And then he is fucking training them, working too hard to make them play like him. It's joyless, and he has to learn, but let also, them be loony, let them be But also, ding, yourself. ding, ding, you have LeBron living in the shadow of Michael Jordan. Yeah, Correct, which is right. perfect. But he would never do it. Well, because he would never well, do how it. does that end, though? What's the end of that? I'll tell you what the end of that is. This is the other part of my pitch, okay? A fundamental scene where the movie breaks Mm. beyond repair is when in the first 15 minutes, LeBron goes into his son's room, sees the game, recognizes. He's good. He's like, this is good. But introduction. I'm an asshole. I'm a fucking drill sergeant. I'm the great Santini. All I care about is my son playing basketball. Look at my giant house. I right? don't like coding. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one son's good. The other one seems to not like it. I don't care. You have to work hard. Right? Mm-hmm. Then he goes into the room, sees the game, realizes his son is great. There's a glitch. Oh, that's a bummer. Right. The son opens up to him about the fact that he cares about this. And LeBron's like, okay, well, by the way, you're going to basketball camp. Also, in hastily adr line, Good news. Malik just texted me. Come with we me have a WB meeting. meeting. You should right. come with It'll me. It'll be fun. Right? right? Yeah. And then they're off. Right? Right. First of all, when LeBron has seen the kid's game, seen his passion for it, sees how good he is at it, and still doesn't respect it as a career choice, he becomes an asshole beyond repair. The obvious hack version of this movie is LeBron does not realize what the kid's passion is. That he's been naive. He's been ignorant. That there's a point in the third act 
where they're in the game and he goes, oh my God, you built all of this? I never realized you were so good. That I understand your later. passion right. now. It should come that later. That should come right. later. Right, where he actually realizes it's more than just a dumb video He cannot feign yeah. ignorance because yeah. he knows what it is and he understands the passion. It also makes zero sense that the son only proudly announces at the Warner Brothers meeting to two cynical execs he's just met, hey, have you heard of E3? I'm going to that camp next weekend. A conversation I've never broached with my father. Right, but I'll do it now. Yeah, look. And then look. that 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 little <laughs> bit where he's like, "You're not going to the camp." Like that is really one of the more bare so David, moments in the David, here's my fix and how this thing fucking bails itself out, right? Uh and and how you can have some sort of ending with this movie that's all about in the shadow trying in vain to recreate Space Jam, right? Whether it's video games or it's the kid is a writer or he wants to be a comic book artist, He's in some creative field, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the kid, as James has said, is more than anything living in the shadow of his father. He is like LeBron James Jr. Everyone right. views I mean, there's him. There's an argument for making the main character LeBron yes. James Jr., the actual LeBron sure. James. But anyway. But, yeah. but he plays basketball, right? He, he does. But he is burdened with the name I, LeBron I, James. Oh, I get it. And, and, I get by it. the way, another thing LeBron has candidly spoken He's about talked publicly. About it. He's yeah. like, yeah. I wasn't yeah. sure if I wanted to give him yeah. my name because, yeah. right, it's intense. Yeah, Right, and we're talking about the kids are growing up very different than he did, you know, his work ethic, whatever. Are they privileged? Are they burdened by this? Like, all this sort of shit. The kid is some sort of creative, right? You pick your fucking field or medium. He could be building a video yeah, game yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. or whatever. Uh, he is embarrassed about the fact that he wants his dad to think he likes basketball because his dad so badly wants him to play basketball, but he secretly loves this other thing, Right. right? Uh, they pitch the thing. LeBron brings the kid to the meeting. He goes in there. The kid is like bummed out at the fact that this is such a cynical exercise, right? Because he's like an artist. He wants to tell his own stories, his own characters, whatever the fuck it is. And the lesson that the kid teaches LeBron is you shouldn't try to do what everyone's done before and try to outdo those people. You should try to be your own person. I can't be LeBron's son. I don't want to be the LeBron James of video games. I want to be the Dom James of video games. You want to create, dare I say it, a new legacy. And the end of the movie is them being like, this is a, fuck, a fucked endeavor. We shouldn't even be playing basketball. And LeBron isn't like Looney Tunes. You should play basketball Looney style. He's like, what do you want to do? You used to be fucking movie stars. Why are we replicating your movie from 25 years ago? Let you be Looney again. And the fucking end of it is they let the Looney Tunes just be insane. And LeBron right. goes it's, through it's, the Looney well, Tunes greatest hits. What you're pitching is the Muppets, the, the Seagull yes. Muppets. And what the movie is, is Hook. Right. It's, it, the movie is basically the plot of Hook, which is right. dad doesn't have time for his kids. His son gets abducted by a yes. villain. And the villain's like, I'll be your dad. I'll be your it, it should be encouraging about dad. LeBron being obsessed with being Jordan and the Looney Tunes being obsessed with trying to replicate the success of Space Jam and Algorithm being obsessed with the fact that movies are math and he can figure out the business. And at the end of it, they're like, fuck the game. And the way they defeat the fucking goon squad or whatever isn't by beating them in basketball with arbitrary rules that don't matter. It's by going like Looney Tunes let's fucking go bugs on their ass, paint the thing on the wall and have them run into it, you know? Like, put them in our yeah. game, duck season, rabbit season, do the greatest hits of Looney Tunes, but do it to knock out these villains and eliminate them as physical threats. The game doesn't matter. You have to create a new legacy. LeBron understands that his son has this passion to this other thing. That's that, fine. That's the version <laughs> of this dog shit movie that's at least functional. Bring, bring, bring. Oh, the phone sort of got a funny tone to it this time. Bing, right. bing, bing. Very, very, a very saucy ring. Okay, David, hello? it's like a cartoon phone. Look at that phone you're holding. It's a cartoon the, phone. Right, it's 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 moving in my hands. Who's on the other end? Click. Hello? hello? Oh, hello. Wow, this is very different from our last caller. It's the Animaniacs, isn't it? Oh, it's, it, wait, am I talking to all three? Am I talking to the Warner Brothers and the Warner Sister Dot? Yes, you are. Okay, so that, that that's Wacko, right? Uh, I think so. Wacko's the one who kind of sounds like a beetle. Right? Yeah. And I'm Dot. You're Dot, okay. And was that Yakko before? Yes, sir. Okay, what's up, Animaniacs? You guys are uh, famous uh, animated characters. Are you in Space Jam? You're not really, are you? Maybe we see you for a second. Yeah, unfortunately we are. We're here in the background there. Yeah, that's why we're calling. It's really kind of damaged our career. 
<laughs> oh, you're feeling bad already just a week in. You're like, we need to do some damage control. I'm feeling horrible. I've been in a depressive spiral. Yeah, I've been eating junk food. Oh, wacko. You don't want to eat too much junk food. You want to, you know, stay healthy. I mean, you know, a little little indulgence maybe, but you want to you eat right. We don't even have the energy to say hello, nurse, anymore. Well, you got to do that. That's one of the things that you do. Well, maybe we're looking for something new to say hello to, David. Well, you could say hello to Hello Fresh, which hello is going to give you fresh. Hello Fresh. <laughs> it's going to give you fresh pre-measured ingredients, mouth-watering seasonal recipes, and it's going to deliver them right to your door. So you can skip a trip to the grocery store. Bring, bring, bring. Wait, the phone's ringing again? Okay, hello. Uh, hello, David. Uh, hello. Who's this? It's Yogi Bear, of course. It's 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 famous baseball player Yogi Berra, or it's Yogi Bear, the cartoon character, the the the, the guy from the, the the what's it called the you know the the where, where does he live Yellowstone right Jellystone. Jellystone that's Jellystone. what it's called there you go there you go David which one do you think it is I think it's the fucking yeah episode. you're correct <laughs> it's the cartoon character yeah you're correct. And David, I'm in a terrible bind right now. What? What is it? Why? Are, am I still on the line with the enemy X, or is it just? Yes, you, now? you are. Okay, everyone's here. David, all what's my, up? My reps dropped me. Space Jam Two and New Legacy is toxic. I can't get work anymore. Wait, are you you're in it too? I, I wasn't really paying attention. In the, to background, the background, that's actors, how damaging yeah. this thing is. And then Ranger Smith kicked me out of Jellystone. I can't steal picnic baskets anymore. I need a way to get food delivered to me, David. His name's Ranger Smith. That's all he's. I, I, for some reason, I thought he had a better name than that. Bring, bring, bring. Who is it? David. Yes. It's the mask. Okay, from from the the film, the mask, not from the scary comic book, the mask, right? Yeah, which one do you think it is, David? I think it's, it's the you know Jim Carrey is the mask. You're in you're in Space Jam too. We're doing all this in in one ad read. Yeah, one could argue this is too many IP characters for one ad read. It's distracting. You're losing the message. Listen, I just want to tell you guys, all of you, right now, about Hello Fresh, which is going to cut out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips. Okay, you can enjoy cooking, get dinner on the table in about thirty minutes or less. They've got 50 menu and market items each week, including ready-to-eat salads, sandwiches, and soups, something for everyone to enjoy. All the recipes are designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity, okay? It's 28% cheaper than shopping at a grocery store, 72% cheaper than going to a restaurant, and it doesn't sacrifice the quality. That's The source for that, that's a Zagat dining survey. So that's real. Bring, bring, bring. Who's this? Hi, it's Mr. Freeze in a bathrobe. Uh, it's Mr. Freeze from Batman. Okay, well, yes, it's nice it is. to hear it's Mr. You, Mr. Freeze, Freeze in a bathrobe. My career is on ice because of this movie. <laughs> hey, that sucks. I'm sorry. Well, Mr. Freeze, do you want to hear about how recently, you know, I cooked some steakhouse pork chops with a creamy pan sauce, roasted potatoes, and lemony green beans? Only if they arrived frozen. Do they have a proprietary packing technology that allows the food to arrive cold and fresh. It's very cold. Yeah, it comes in this box and it's cold. You know, they make sure that the meat and the vegetables and all that are in are in peak condition. It's 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 very good. And, uh, you know, they 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 source everything from growers and deliver everything from the farm to your front door in under a week. So it's fresh. Very f- hello fresh, you know, bring bring. bring. OK, I'm going to read this person. The call to action. All right. Who is it? Hello. Hey. Hey, what's up? Who's this? It's uh, Academy and Emmy Award nominee Don Cheadle. I really think I made a big mistake here. Wow. Oh well, it's okay, Don. You're you're fine. You you're kind of a bulletproof actor, in my opinion. And listen, Don, you can always go to hellofresh.com/slash/14check and use code 14check for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. Okay. So that's hellofresh.com/slash/14check. Code 14check. You're going to get 14 free meals plus free shipping. It's America's number one meal kit. Okay. But David, I have a concern. This is Don Cheadle with a concern. I understand. What if I previously signed up for Green Chef? Uh, yeah, you know, that's fine. Green Chef is now uh, working with HelloFresh. They're owned by them and just means that there's a wider array of meal plans to choose from. There's something for everybody. You can switch between the brands. That's you great news. Both. I love switching yeah. between the brands. 
Sure. You mean like prestige or franchise? Well, it was working for me up until this movie, I would argue. I don't know. You're an Emmy nominee. You're doing great. HelloFresh.com slash 14 check. Code 14 check. 14 free meals plus free shipping. I'm hanging up all the phone. Hello, Fresh. No, no, no. You're, uh, you're gone. Goodbye. Now, there's an argument that maybe at one point there was more of that happening. The Terrence God dance knows, of it all. Right. Like, you know, the whole thing got retooled. There's also the other problem that Warner Brothers is so intent on like, well, let's use this to like fucking advertise Warner Brothers As and you be, put the it, Warner Brothers right. be the next Disney. Warner Brothers next I was going to ask yes. that question. Do you think that, I mean, I know that that's what they were trying to do with, you know, having, having him drive through all these different yes. movies. I mean, is this an effective ad for any of those no, I properties? So. I mean, no. is anyone, I mean, no, I don't know. I mean, no, I, I loved I it. I love IP. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay. You like the it. IP surprises, right? Oh yeah. I think falling through IP seems like fucking cool as hell. I've always wanted okay. to do that. But, uh, James, I tease this for you. This is the big thing they're trying to do. The thing that everyone else, every other studio is jealous of is that the common lay people know what Disney owns and what they don't. Disney mm. has clear They've branding. Decades of work. Right. They, you know. they had that for a century, right? Everyone knows which movies are classically Disney movies, but they also know that Disney owns Pixar and Disney owns Marvel and Disney owns Star Wars, and that's the umbrella. And Warner Brothers is like, last year's HBO Max launch was all about these fucking posters where it's like, bada bing, and it's Tony Soprano and Chandler bing, right? Being like, <laughs> we have these three things. It's Wizard of Oz and Big Bang Theory and, and fucking it, Adventure and it, Time. And it's horrible because it's like, right... But that's the whole point. It's that's like, what this movie's trying to do. They're just trying to remind you this is what Warner Brothers and, owns. And all the, of these things. And the, and the reason it's weird, too, is you're combining these very adult movies. Yes, with, that, yeah, it's like the, the Matrix. I mean... That's the, the whole yeah, thing with yeah. Disney. It's like Disney made has done what it's done, but it's done that by sacrificing the right. rest of it. Very you know, narrow space, silos. Right. And then Warner Brothers is like, ooh, can we be that narrow? And like someone, right, because someone on like, Matt Patches was saying like, oh, this shows how little of an impact Warner Brothers has made. Like, the, And I'm like, no, they just did other movies that right. won't fit into this. Patches, they just like Patches' had, like, point Clint was that Jury Road is the only thing from the last 20 years that made it into the movie. And your point was like, they've had like, Christopher Nolan 10 movies. major Christopher Nolan yeah, you know, movies. Oceans movies, Clint right. Eastwood movies. Like, right, you know. there's a lot of shit that they're not touching, but it's like they're they're looking for shiny brand properties. They're looking for that because now everything's just about shareholders right. and okay. what is proprietarily yours. This is like an upfront. I it's it's say, an upfront to just remind you like we're sitting on this catalog. So, so one reason I thought this movie was better than I think is I thought it was going to be so much of that. The uh, going through. None the, of the IP characters like Hawk. They're no, just it's, not. It's really unique. like a, a 10 minute sequence in total. Like them right. bouncing. And then them from, just being featured extras. I thought, you, you know, so I posted a picture of the LeBron Batman as Robin. Le Robin and yeah. Bugs as Batman. So that's one sequence. Mm -hmm. There's uh, Casablanca with Yosemite Sam. Fury Road. They piss Superman off, by the they way. They do piss Superman off. so sad. I argue that was the high point of the movie on a very relative scale because it was nice to see like Brute's Tim style artwork and them approximate it differently. Uh, so there's uh, just to go through it all before I reveal what my favorite was, there's Ca Casablanca. There's Harry Potter where well, LeBron Casablanca, is like. Casablanca, I think the universe of Casablanca should be explored further. You, you, well, you think I think it we should have like update. a TV series. It's one of my favorite franchises. Casablanca yes. was, it was, uh, was asked to be uh, uh by the way yeah. ben there was an 80s casablanca tv series that was as you would expect a notorious disaster <laughs> like a network casablanca tv show that ran for six episodes and people were irate <laughs> does he say here's looking at you kid at the end of every episode he punches through the looney tunes rings porky pig style and that's what he says like um so uh, there's a uh, Foghorn Leghorn rides a dragon for Game of Thrones. Of uh, there's the Matrix, uh, which we've all seen the clip. Granny, even God, if you yeah. haven't watched your Granny, yep. uh, uh, is there anything I'm forgetting here? I, don't uh, think so. I think those are the main ones. Right? Oh, oh no, and they go into the Wonder Woman no, comic. There's book. the rock bottom Wonder Woman sequence, yes. which is I find just so insulting. Mm. Why can't she be funny? Like Warner Brothers Lola. is has fun with yeah. everyone else, but it's yes. like, well, no, Wonder Woman and Lola can't be funny because they're like inspirational figures. It's like, fuck off, have right. some fun. It well, bumps me and out. That one's it, like, it, it, so it, she's like talking yeah, but, about but how Lola's an Amazon. No, but Get that's, that's, that's the, a big problem with this movie is every everything is a reference, yes, right? right. It's, there's nothing. Or, there's so little original. Even the jokes are often just references to like LeBron in like the Taco Tuesday Instagram or yes, stuff like that. Yes, and yes. so it's the same with the Wonder Woman <laughs> thing, where it's basically a reference 
to a political point they're trying to make, yeah. but there's nothing actually going on within the movie. But you it's know? also, it's a yeah. recreation, uh, it, it feels largely like a recreation of the opening of Wonder Woman 1984, yeah, the, right? the games. But the, instead uh, they make it that they go inside right. a comic book, which is like a whole other thing this movie's not tapping into, which is like, so is any media in the server verse? That's a fair question. They, I mean, people can be digitized. They pick a style that does not look like a comic book, right? It like, looks they like give a it dots, yeah, but yeah, otherwise yeah. it looks like fucking just I the just, same garbage Tom and Jerry straight to video movie I just animation. Found it's so patronizing off. that Lola can't be funny. Apart from little this is, toss This stuff, is what but, I want to say. No, 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 it's no, Rosario no. Dawson because she does these anime films. I want to say this two second thing because this is one of those things that like faux controversy went viral, right? Malcolm D. Lee was like, I watched the original movie, which, by the way, he only saw after they offered him this yes, sequel. he doesn't like space. Two weeks after the, the actual visionary director, Terrence Stance, got fired. He watched it in a weekend. He was on set two days later. He did an interview recently with the Great Lights Camera Jackson, where he said, like... He uh, likes Looney Tunes. He seems to have no interest in uh, basketball. Never seen like, Space Jam. Uh, but he, in the Lights Camera Jackson interview, said, like, we had a Looney Tunes expert on set, which was so helpful, because I was able to ask them the tough questions at any time, like, is Tweety a boy or a girl? And <laughs> what is Tweety's thing? <laughs> Why do we find Tweety funny? What's her or his game? What is Tweety's? It a doesn't boy. matter. Okay. The, Tweety's, Tweety's game is... I, you know, I don't need to get into Tweety's okay. game. Okay, Tweety's a boy. <laughs> yeah, I know Tweety's what Tweety's a boy. game is. Tweety's a boy, but Looney Tunes had no female characters pre-Lola of any right, significance, right. so they would make Tweety the girl character for merchandise because right. Tweety was cute. Tweety's cute. And that created gender confusion. But also maybe Tweety's fluid. I don't want to. I don't want to yeah, box. Exactly. I'm Tweety saying right. We don't. I haven't talked to Tweety. Tweety's not a guest. Tweety is whoever it, it, they feel comfortable as. Um, what I was going to say mm -hmm. is that he does this interview where he was like, "I watched the movie with my daughters and was like, holy fucking shit, Lola is so sexualized in this movie. She's just girl bunny with They're tits playing like you know." Woo -woo -woo. Music. And the whole uh, thing's right. about the fact that Bugs has the hots for her and she's able to seduce all the other monsters on the court or whatever. She has no personality. Her game is just that she's like Jessica Rabbit, right? And he was like, it's 2021. We should move past this. What they did was just remove the sexuality as a game and left her with nothing. Yeah, she's just other than like level Yas headed. Queen, right, sort of like, right. She's got nothing going on. There's no fucking character here. She has five lines in the movie. They are, as I quoted, just things like, Way to go, LeBron. Right. It, it's a lot well, of that. Well, and it's like the idea being that the, the, the alternative to a sexualized Lola Bunny is basically like an activist in some sense, right? Like, but like a like stoic not, act. A stoic We're act all just like, supposed to be yeah, like, like, like... not not Yes. Good, yes. Good. yes. Not a person or a character, but just but like... Nothing. A, yeah. But nothing. Here's what, here's what I want to say. Yes. I, I thought the Mad Max thing was funny. I do too. I think... That, I think that is absolutely unquestionably the high point of the now, IP. Can, can I tell you yeah, what I like about I agree. it? Wiley Coyote looked fucking cool. It looks and cool. The, like, it design. actually uses a Looney Tunes joke Thank you. that melds with the thing. It's you this know is, the him writing is, Witness oh, Me yes. and all that. So, David, I have a question though. You you said that this movie was a little bit better than you expected because right. you expected it to be such an IP fest that you couldn't watch it. Didn't you find I thought the IP <laughs> section to be? far less painful than the rest of the movie because I did like very clearly found it much less painful. I, I would have watched painful, 30 it, minutes of the yeah. Well, that's a fair <laughs> if argument. It was yeah. at the Mad Max level. You're right. That the argument is like, in a way, is it, should there be more because they actually, it's not right. good, but it's like. But you could have done a full Seagull Muppets where you're like actually taking the time to right. recollect them rather than it doing just, it in a montage. I, I think you're dead on that not only does the uh, Mad Max section have actual Looney Tunes I thought, gags. I also thought LeBron looked good in like the Mohawk. And so I like that he kind of like stepped up for it's that. It's nice that there's the style exercise, which right. I argue Matrix is the only one where they kind of come close to doing this, where it's like we're replicating the filmmaking of the movie, right? Like there's like an adaption of style and how the Looney Tunes fit into it and all that sort of shit. But it also is, that's the only pairing that makes sense where you're like, if Wiley e. Coyote and Roadrunner had to go that's where to they would go. something. That's why I hated the Superman one where I'm like, why is Daffy in this? This makes no sense. Also, Daffy isn't Superman. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Right. Most of the, like, why Yosemite, is Yosemite Sam? Sam well, because his name is Sam. Yeah, fuck off. His, um, <laughs> his name is Sam. Like, so when Terrence Nance, one of the few things he shot before they fired was him. Was Casablanca sequence, Was Casablanca, right. but he did it with Pepe Le Pew instead, which more, is when more, Pepe Le Pew was cut out of the but movie. But more thematically appropriate. Yeah, because he's the fucking romantic. And he, he smokes or whatever, right. you know, in his, right, you know. Right, it, but you were like, why is Granny in the Matrix? Like, this is so arbitrary. Oh, oh, oh Granny in the Matrix, because it's comedy gold. 
Here's, here's another. <laughs> the thing about Granny is she sucks. She sucks. So Granny is what? She's the Sylvester's Tweety Bird's yeah, owner. Her game is that she's oblivious and she doesn't and realize this violence is happening. And they turn her into rapping Granny from she's The Wedding rapping. Singer. Oh, and, oh. and she and she works well in the first one because it's like Wayne Knight go sit next to Granny. You know yeah. who's who's got the, the joke public. is yeah. that she's this like boring quaint old lady. Yeah. And then this, the joke is they're like, isn't it funny when old ladies do things that old ladies don't really do? Which well, is like, that joke was run to the ground in 1998. <laughs> it sure was. It's never been part of this character. <laughs> and she has so much screen time in this movie. She's like, Granny does more than Taz does, which I have to imagine is once again a Yas Queen thing where they're like, we only have two female characters. I, they, you don't, it may have been some fucking algorithm thing yeah. in its yeah. way, right? Where like it must have tested in some but way. But does Granny like move merch? Maybe, no, but maybe it was just like Granny did great numbers when Ugh. we tested that's 20 the, minutes of footage or whatever. I don't know, but don't it just know. feels that way, right? That, that's like, the other yeah. massive problem is that the, the villain in this film is an algorithm and yet sure the film the film is made by an algorithm and the, it, 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 like, it's recursive <laughs> yes and then nothing to kind of proves him right like the film opening to 32 million dollars <laughs> is like i guess the algorithm <laughs> wins well here's here's one thing though and part of me saying like, it wasn't as bad as i thought i really thought there was gonna be no looney tunes they're, they are kind of all over the movie. Now, I don't think any of it is that successful. David, I think they're all over the movie in as much as there's IP all over the movie standing in the stands. That None of them work. None of their games really. I mean, there's okay. like... But they, they at least have sequence. I thought they weren't going to. You know, there's that middle where they're like doing bits and they're, you know, and like, I, 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 I disagree on that. David, when you say... I, just think literal plot time. David, I just when you say it's better, nothing. They're just there the whole time. No, there's this whole sequence in the gym where they're all doing. They it's, all get. First to, of all, it's not the gym. It's the spaceship. The spaceship and he's gym. on the fucking whiteboard, and yeah, that's yeah, yeah. one montage that's also part of them, like getting collected that lasts for like two minutes. No, it's longer than that. But uh, it's David, not, when you yeah, say it's right. better than you expected, do you just mean as it's better as an ex exercise in Hollywood corporatism? than you thought, or that it's actually a better movie than you thought? I thought the whole thing was going to be LeBron saying, hi, insert name of Warner Brothers character, as they go from, like, a place to place. But then you're like, also hey, Trinity, saying that's the hey, only stuff Mad Max. that worked <laughs> on a relative <laughs> scale that had no, any sort I of energy to it. I don't hate the game. I, even oh, though the game oh, makes the no game sense. Is so boring. Because I kind of locked into the Kevin Love thing, I was like, okay, so this is about LeBron having to loosen up. Okay. Can, can I can, I, can I grapple with those can stakes. Can I point out a weird thing? I about also the game? like moments in the game where he's like, we got to switch on D. And I'm like, against <laughs> a water man? Like, a man who can <laughs> stop yes. time. It's irrelevant. Just, that's a great <laughs> strategy. Made me laugh. Is that, that, that was a great moment, too, because it come, he says that at the end of the. It, I think it's the last play where he's like, are we switching everything? Yeah, yeah, or he says it on the last play, which is like, this. <laughs> point, isn't it like you have to do like a reverse, you know, you know, fucking granny slam to right. get a thousand points or whatever the, way, the stupid rules it are? Right? Been, it would have been amazing if on on the last play, the uh, what what was even? I didn't even know what the villain team is called. What are they the called? Goon They're the goon squad. Okay, if the goon squad had run just like a traditional spread pick and roll, right, yeah. like trying to find <laughs> trying to find just, a corner three, he's like, like <laughs> through the screens, like they just finally yeah. like actually play yeah. basketball. Yeah. There's that. Oh God! It's so. It is so grim. Uh, the 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 just the, the goon squad. I hate them. What do you guys think of Cheadle's performance? Because like Cheadle is obviously kind of like being given limitless space, and he's like, yeah. "Okay, I'll fill it. Like I'll just go as big as I can." Because what else am I? Gonna, like this is not calling for subtlety, I can't right? I believe I'm going to say this. I feel like he could have gone bigger. <laughs> he no. To be fair, Griff, you have to acknowledge at one point he grows. He gets big. He gets large. He gets, gets Ben huge. size. Yeah, he gets yeah. huge. And, and with like Scorpion King level CGI, yeah, like it weird. Look, yeah, Why is his it's face creepy. wrong? It's creepy. Right. Yeah. Um, you think he could have gone bigger? Yeah. Look, I think he could have gone bigger, but I think this is another fundamental failing of the movie that you walked me into. Okay. We're talking about LeBron, unfortunately, being the ultimate auteur of this movie because they hired a fucking weird artsy guy and then immediately got terrified, fired him off, hired Malcolm D. Lee, who just was like a fucking babysitter on this thing, right? Seems like, that way. I hate this movie. I like most of Malcolm D. Lee's filmography. He's a guy I defend. I cannot really ding him for this he, at all. He must have. It was, it's, it's marching just, orders. This thing's on rails. You right. have to just keep it on just rails. LeBron has to be done in eight weeks or it whatever. It sucks. Right, right yeah. whatever. Um, but... Uh, I, I think if you're talking about the relative success, I'm talking creatively of the first movie, why it is watchable. A lot of credit has to go to Ivan Reitman He's and there, to the executives understand. Ivan Reitman was 
very hands-on with that movie. Yep. In a lot of ways with the uncredited director, you have the animation directors, you have Joe Picca doing live action. Mm -hmm. Reitman is overseeing both and is also like very hands-on on both and is the guy who is making those two things fit together. He's kind of the ultimate auteur of that movie, weirdly enough as it is. Ivan Reitman was a very smart businessman. Like above, yeah. I, I think, he's you know, savvy. I like he's, him as a yeah. filmmaker, but he's working with him. You realize more than anything, this guy's a smart businessman. Like he understands the business of movies and how to work around people and stars and understand what the audience wants to see and all that other shit. But also, here's a guy with fucking comedy bona fides. He's going to make sure that okay. the Looney Tunes are funny. He's also going to call in favors and get Wayne Knight and Bill Murray in this movie. So you have people. ringers. Well, who you are have Lil Rel. You have Little Rel who should have been playing the fucking agent character yeah, who rather is than commentate. Who is He's that an actor guy? who I Chris realized Davis. was in Atlanta was very good. He's kind of, I, I, I didn't understand who he was in this movie, but they I never, he was, was kind of funny. I don't but know. I'm like, that should be Lil Rel. That should be a space sure, where you bring sure. in Little Rel and go, Lil Rel, improvise as much as you want, come up with anything. Uh, weird, weird side grip is, did, did we see Chris Davis in that off Broadway Jack, Jack Johnson play at Lincoln Center? Did he play Jack Johnson? I did not see that with you. Oh, okay. You did see it, though. I did. Okay. Yes. I that might have been him. Okay. I Let's think that might have been him. I think he's a fine actor. I think you need to hire someone who is literally, like, in a Bill Murray zone, right? I mean, as hackney as it is, you need to hire, like, a comedian first and foremost, because hiring Don Shield to play Algorithm is, like, you're not hiring him for gravitas here, right? Mm -hmm. You're not hiring him even in, like, a Danny DeVito swack hammer kind of way. He's not playing menacing. And if the bit's going to be that he's this, like, fucking cyber Beetlejuice who can transform into anything and make anything go off, then what you it. should be doing, what you should be doing is getting a comedian in front of a green screen and just going, like, go, go wild. Do funny do things. Yeah, anything say, you make, want. make jokes about LeBron, right. whatever, right. Cheadle's working as hard as he can to make this work. It is depressing. I feel like we talked about this in a recent episode, maybe Rosewood. You look at Cheadle's career, right? And from, like, 2012 on... The last eight or nine years, it's pretty much just 15 Marvel appearances, a lot of Marvel. two Showtime series, and he directs his Miles Davis movie. He, like, has not been in another... That's why it's so good to see him in No Sudden Move. Yeah. In, within, but industry in a nutshell, within one week, HBO Max puts up a Soderbergh movie that was produced for, like, a fucking dollar with 30 actors who were so desperate to be in a real fucking thing. Right. That, they're, they're, like, like, great. Well, I'll show up. Yeah. Right. Where, and Cheadle where, where. gets like a real fucking role in the lead. Space Jam movie. Right. That's Cheadle's second non Marvel film role in six years. Since Miles Ahead. So, yeah. And I feel yeah, like already years, no yeah. one's talking about No Sudden Move. And even if it's only out of like uh, disgust, everyone's thinking about Space Jam now. He is also going to be in the No Bombach White Noise, which is I exciting. I'm happy he seems to be doing shit. Right. He seems to be kind of. Right. Yeah, because he's one of our best actors and Such kind of just got sucked into Showtime and Marvel. This? He's working his hardest, and he's I would hard. argue he... Is, is he the best thing in the movie? Is, is he, he the, the best, best performance thing? in the movie? By default? Probably. Maybe Sarah Silverman? Yeah, I she, kind she of agree with you that she's like, <laughs> sort of funny. Wood Harris does okay with a sort of a Cindy light... Cindy Martin Green, kind of like, in, in the <laughs> Teresa Russell role, <laughs> But he might, But he might be, still be the third best. Cindy uh, Martin Green is very talented. This is obviously a shit role. She as, actually as this, plays it like she, there's something to care about. Right, she, she's trying to have some yeah. stakes there. She's his wife, plays his wife. Yeah, oh, okay. it's like an incredible uh, actor. She's a very good actor. Um... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Dame Lillard, he's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, Marvin the Martian is kind of fun for a little bit there. Well, yeah, I, well, I kind of could have done with more Marvin. Does he not play? He yeah. doesn't. He's, he is stuck on Toon World. Because they take his ship. But then he comes back he and does, then they keep but, dropping right. the thing on his yeah. head. It's so stupid. I mean, he was the referee in the original movie because I guess the idea is he was always kind of antagonistic to the Looney right. Tunes. But he, then he, also he's... Yosemite Sam and Fudd are playing with them. Well, Whatever. The referee in this movie was... Oh, fuck, I forgot his name. Steve. <laughs> Steve. What is called Steve? I hate <laughs> well, wait, him. No. Is it Steve? His name is Steve. <laughs> the, little, uh, the little guy. No, it's Pete. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh. You're mad about that? <laughs> it's even worse somehow. I don't know why. Is it? I don't think it's I worse. like that less. Um, uh, what was I going to say, though? Um, yes, they do so little with uh, Marvin. Uh, I feel like they use the tunes so poorly in general. Oh, this is what I was going to say. Why is Daffy the coach? Mm -hmm. Why do they immediately... tie. Daffy just immediately goes, I'm going to be the coach. Right. Right? Yeah. And then I'm like, 
Okay, interesting. What's the comedian take on this? Nothing. He 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 gets to do a he couple the, lines. He does later. the Bob Knight, right? right. Is that yeah. was big? He, he he wears the red sweater and throws the. I'm sorry, which it. which is also weirdly that like should, disconnected. But that should be the whole game. Whole movie yeah. is disconnected yeah. references. Yeah. Death like, yeah. is like Twister. Pig. What is happening? You can't just ben, say ben, ben. notorious you pig. Oh, I can and I did. My point is that Daffy, who is so fucking funny in general, right? His whole game is being like flustered, having this bravado, it immediately getting deflated. It makes sense to have him be like Jeff Van Gundy, right? It makes sense to have him be on the side of the mm-hmm, court, like mm-hmm. losing his fucking mind. And right, having but they don't really, wrong. if they had that in the movie, they decided not they to include it. They make one Bobby Knight right. reference, yeah, nothing. And it's like, at that point, why are you putting Daffy on the sidelines in a blazer? I mean- To what end? The Notorious P.I.G. Okay, the Notorious P.I.G. <laughs> I- I imagine the reality is that someone thought that up and was proud of that decision and that's why it's in the movie. But I would like to imagine that like there was some early meeting where some Warner executive was like, you know what? I I have a great idea. Notorious PIG. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, well, we'll think about that. And then every time he checks, he's like, how's Notorious (laughs) PIG coming along? Right? Like, and they're like, at a certain point, they're like, do we have to do it? And he's yeah. like, yeah, we, we, we have to do Notorious P.I.G. Well, we gotta do it. Like, they also I, might have plugged Hamilton into the algorithm, right? Oh but it's such Unfortunately. a different type of <laughs> yeah. 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 Sure. I feel like it's more of a reference to the era of like tough Looney Tunes t-shirts. It's a bit, and of course it's also like his stuttering style, like you could sort of, they're like, it'll be it's like he, he starts out, that way right, and then and it re- becomes yeah. beatboxing and whatever. Also, like, I, I swear to God, I have, I I cannot name specifics here right now. I must have seen at least eight cartoon shows over the last 25 years do notorious PIG jokes. Like that is like such a fucking worn out joke where you have a cartoon pig who acts hip hop. PIG, right? If you swap the one letter. Everyone's gotten there. Like it it took no time to get there. So that's what I'm asking. It's like someone just like, well, we have to do notorious PIG. Or is it just some, yeah, anyway. I mean, it's just because some old fucking executive where it's like, that's to him, it to that's be. the most recent I want it to reference be some to a hip hop five year old guy. Just I mean, <laughs> as Scott, Scott Gardner podcast The Ride had the perfect tweet about this movie, which was just, uh, it's like an entire movie made up only of studio notes. Yeah. Like, it doesn't even feel like there was an original script there they were noting. It's like, this is a blue sky ideation session of just studio execs throwing everything. And then they just put it in an arbitrary order. Like this movie's sweaty because it was designed in a sauna amongst like executives. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. It was it, it was born from sweat. How, yes. how weird yeah. was it that they're they're so kid gloves with LeBron in the whole film? And then like that moment where LeBron just basically bullies Anthony Davis for having a unibrow. I I found that really the unibrow moment in this movie. And it's thank you for reminding me of that because I forget because it's so because there's that earlier line where he says like what do they do to my boy AD and it's like okay good you acknowledge that one of these players is your teammate right sure and it's odd that he is now a, a bird yeah, it's <laughs> not it's some weird digital distortion like they could have made saying, it that like, algorithm sucked them in and transformed no, I, them into monsters I know, well because yeah he's but, scanned, you know, but it's yeah. Like, he's connected he plays him to, with Anthony Davis and he's on connected the him sure, to right? the NBA sure. player so he yeah. needs to at least acknowledge like right I am I like take showers with this man yeah, and fine, now yeah. he is a bird yeah. like what, what happened but yeah. then right there's the thing where he's like of course yes th- at that point they're mad at the goon squad because they're you know the heat of competitive spirit and playing mm. what's the game called joe ball <laughs> D- dom ball dom jam or something. <laughs> yeah, i think it's called it's dom ball called i think dom. it's called dom ball so yeah so he insults his brow but then he right it's like three lines it's like the brow's over with like it's you better sucks. shave that thing you off. Or it's like, it's like what? and also it's so weird because this has been something that Anthony Davis has always been like, yeah, I get a lot of criticism for it, but like it's me and I, I like own it. You know, it's, and like, it's and part it's like, of and me. Right. Last so the point I look, say, I say to James, sorry, but I say to James, Anthony Davis is the only one of these players I have ever heard of. You, right? You know about the brow. You've I know that. about him because right. of the eyebrow, and the only thing I know about this guy is he's got the prominent eyebrow, and he's really proud of it, and he doesn't touch it. Yeah, that's only. You know, he all got I drafted. Know. Everyone was like, "He's gonna get rid of, right. need to get rid of that thing." All and he's I know like, is no, he's, no, he's right. owned the shit out of that unibrow. Right. Right. That's right. all I know. And by the way, I mean cynically, that moment does sort of like cut Anthony Davis down to size a little bit uh, on 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 behalf of LeBron. And, and some look, way, you know. if this movie was coming out and the Lakers were in the finals, it'd be different. Yeah. But after Davis shot the bed in the playoffs, got yeah. hurt, yeah. 
it's kind of like, but I actually think it, it almost like, functions it's, it's, even better after like I know I guess this was filmed before the pandemic, right? Or it yes, yeah, twenty nineteen. Like but it almost right? functions yeah, even yeah. better actually after they won the title, where it's like LeBron being like, "Yeah, this is my Robin." You right. know what I mean? Because right. like, he's the, a bird. Anthony Davis is uh, he's yeah, not gonna, argu- arguably better than LeBron, maybe better than LeBron. Hard to say. Well. But like at when the Anthony least, Davis like, was number one on the Pelicans, they you know they were at, a, at, a fairly hopeless team. At this point, he is at at, at least more talent. I think more talented yeah. than LeBron, even if he doesn't have these sort of uh, Genius, super and, and also IQ. just gravitas and, and sort of whatever that communal superpower I mean, that he LeBron is ten has. years younger than yeah. LeBron, yeah. so he just has yeah. that going for him, right? I mean, so you got Dame Lillard. He he because of Dame time, he controls time. Clay Thompson is wet fire because he's the you splash. Feel, I know it could never happen. Energy just got sucked out of the room the second you started <laughs> explaining. Yeah, so you got a, like not you just just Diana you got Tarassi quiet, but the three of us just Mamba, sort of like closed so our like eyes listening. and exhaled. Uh, I think Dame Lillard probably would have been pretty good as the lead of this film. Dame actually. Lillard is yeah, he's yeah. pretty charismatic, and he has yeah. that thing too of like, he I don't give a shit. Right? I don't care. Yeah. I, and like uh, I haven't uh, left Portland. Kyrie's yeah. a better traumatic actor. Well, fucking Ky- Uncle Drew. Yeah, well, Kyrie's, around. Kyrie's not going to. Griff, I got some. Yeah, I don't know I anything, anything about yeah. what the fuck is going on with Kyrie. But, but, yeah. That's Uncle Drew is a great comparative, right? Because Uncle Drew that's is not a good one. movie, but it's like enjoyable to watch. It's more enjoyable to watch than this. It's a little. You bring Lorel in as fucking comedic support and go like, you need and, someone and who's Nick actually Kroll. funny yeah. and knows how to be in movies to fucking carry this thing. And it has the same basic plot, which is we got to get the band yes. back together, you know, right? Like, to play a, a tougher, mean group of anonymous superpower. Their superpower in that movie is they're not eighty. They're youth. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But it. But it's very similar. It, it's and it's. It's I I forget how much money I guess like it did okay it did okay it did right? okay let's find out I think it, it didn't cost as much no, it did obviously. thirty or forty domestic I right have to imagine. It, it didn't do great but like it, so it probably won't do as well as this movie but I would say on balance more success more more yeah. of an artistic success yeah. even though it's also like based on a commercial and like well that's kind of cursed this right, movie yeah. felt like a commercial to me this, this movie feels like a feels commercial a for wild, HBO like Max. a Super Bowl yes. ad yes the kind of thing where it's like it's two minutes at the Super Bowl oh LeBron and the Looney Tunes it's like Space Jam 2 and then there's like some link you can click on right and watch that's the 10 minute saying. version when they do the, on the fucking website. like yeah. ET sequel commercial it feels like that and and you even said James everything that's happened in this movie could have been accomplished in two minutes like Space Jam felt like a better exploration of what is between the lines of a Super Bowl ad where this felt like a Super Bowl ad that was stretched out. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And the joke is, look, we wouldn't actually remake Space Jam, but we can do it in the name of AT&T. Right. And LeBron can, like, film it for, you know, half a day. Right. And give it his all. to do yeah. as much. Right. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, it, it is, look, it, it, having him be such a joyless character in this movie, right? Having him be such a stick in the mud, asking him to mostly be like some sort of emotional spine of this thing is putting shit on him that I don't think he's innately equipped to do. I think he's better at comedy and he probably needs directors and co-stars who are like giving him jump ball energy to he, work he off of. He needs a lot more. Yes. Help. But anyone needs more Absolutely. help in this movie. Absolutely. Right. But also it is thankless to, and I have to imagine once again that this is like a scheduling production reality because he is an actively playing player to then mostly put him in animation world where he's going to suffer even more as a voiceover artist. Like, he's going to be even more flat. He's pretty flat. This is another wild thing, because I was like, who's this fucking, like, B-team they handed the animation over to? It is ostensibly the same people who did the first movie. As as far as I could tell, Tony Cervone and Spike Brandt, who are, like, Warner Brothers company it, it men. Looks, it looks bad. The first movie looks good. Like, I the know, first movie is high-quality fucking animation. Know, and it looks crappy. And not only that, it's, like, shaded. They're, like, yeah, good dimensionality. Yeah, lighting. When yeah, he's yeah. in the real world, it's... Com- when when cool. he's in their world, it's yeah. composited well. When they're in his world, it's composited well. The CG eye looming scenes obviously look fucking awful. But even when they're just straight in animation world, I was like, it looks like those clips that occasionally go viral of those like nightmare Tom and Jerry direct to video movies where they're like, it's Tom and Jerry and the chocolate factory. And they have this weird style. They're clearly animated in like flash. They're very kind of like static. Looks they nothing like LeBron. Did them. Looks nothing like LeBron. But the, also the LeBron avatar is a disaster. Looks Horrible. terrible. And the Looney Tunes look bad. Like they, they design wise look bad. They don't move properly. The timing is off, which is all of Looney Tunes is about timing. All the classic like fucking termite terrorist guys it was all about the timing of the physicality and the energy and the gags. 
And this, it's like everything is so sped up, you can't follow it. You can't track it. And those guys did the original Space Jam, did shit before that at Warner Brothers, and in the 25 years in between, mostly got relegated to -to direct-to-video Scooby-Doo and Tom and Jerry movies. They did all those movies in between, and it's like they have regressed in style, and they're now stuck doing like the shittier version of what they once did. But, but in this movie, Bugs Bunny dies. They kill him. LeBron realizes that the only way to win the game is to exploit his son's failings as a program. <laughs> it's true. It's true. That the to, way to, to, to win exploit is, a glitch, is yes. to highlight his son's failure, right? The son says, but that crashed the game and caused that character to get deleted, which doesn't even really make sense, but whatever, right? The threat is then someone's going to get deleted. Now, I said this already. I do not understand the stakes of what is in this for algorithm. I understand that he feels burned because they did not like his idea. No, they didn't like it. And he wants LeBron in the serververse so that he can put him in, you know, the fucking sisterhood of the traveling pants as Demi yes. desperately pitched. Right. But I don't understand what good it does for him that the Looney Tunes are deleted unless you have one line of dialogue where he says, like, they're the worst testing characters in our server. We need to cut them. Right. I don't understand what it does for him to suck a lot of civilians into the game. To what end? That does not improve your program. That does not improve your server. It's also very confusing because it's already distracting every time they cut to any angle of the basketball game because your eyes are darting around trying to recognize characters. There's too much visual information on screen. All the background actors playing these IP surprises are doing way too much. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! And yeah. doing it in like a weird early video game limited animation cycle where it's like they're doing the same cheer over and yeah. over again. None of them are doing the same thing. It doesn't feel like they're reacting to anything specific in the game. But also, you're looking at it and you're like, okay, that's definitely Mr. Freeze. This is a gangster, but I can't tell if he's supposed to be in The Sopranos or he's just generic off There's the There's some where you're like, okay, well, I know who that is. And there's right. some where you're like, okay, is this just vaguely supposed to be? Right. right. It's yeah. an archetype. You want right, like right, a, right. a fucking Roman soldier or whatever. And then you look next to him and you're like, Postman, Postman, what's a big Warner Brothers Postman movie? And then you go, oh, that might just be a postman (laughs) because for whatever reason, algorithm has chosen the first thousand people who look at their phone and sucked them in. Sure. Well, one thing Space Jam 1 did really well too is tack back to the real life consequences of people both disappearing into a golf hole, but also having their talent zapped. So you have the NBA collapsing, this like pandemic. People and like, and even and even for the comedy, you know, just Bill Murray uh-huh. talking, you're just saying, "Look, Larry, like the game is changing. Like with yeah. these stars going out, like right. it, a, a, anything's on the table. There's like real yeah. world consequences, and like Sonequa Mark Green gets sucked into this and is just like, "You better win this game. Yeah. It's like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey. You, you should be asking eight million questions <laughs> yes. right well, this now. This is the thing that's so annoying when LeBron says, to his "Kid, like, hey, we need to figure this out because like this is high stakes." And this kid doesn't get it. Right. So then you're just like, okay, so there's no stakes. Right. So let's exploit this glitch. But if we exploit the glitch, someone might get deleted. It's a risk I'm willing to take. What's the risk? You're going to die. The Looney Tunes are going to die. Your son, all these people here who are like, like, what does it matter? And then it's like, they do it. It works. It half works, but then fully works because the son throws the thing. It's weird also that he has to like, win his son's love back by beating him at basketball <laughs> and that the son being a good player, he, he doesn't transform the son's way. So right. like, that's the sort of homage. I, I also right, think they right. should have been playing against original characters that his son made. Like that would have m- worked. Well, his son sort of nominally scanned those players, right? I understand he, that. Yeah, right, right, right. I understand that, but yeah. it would have made more sense if it's like, dad, you're playing against like my creation. You mm-hmm. have to like reckon with my work. Right. Mm -hmm. In this way where it's like this is this weird mangling of their technology, of his technology. Um, When he takes to the court and he's like super powered, it's just like, well, he's a little kid and he's got these fucking like Tron beams around his arm and he can jump really high and he can do fucking whatever. Like it just means nothing. The game is rigged. He throws this fucking jump point. LeBron wins. The thing's over. Everyone's celebrating. Then like five minutes later, Bugs is like, Cough, cough. It's I, been nice. I'm dying. Right. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Why does he need to die? 
cut because uh, Christ died for our sins. Okay, I don't know. I do, I have no idea. And when that was happening, I was like ready to leave. Right, go home to my the child. The movie ends three minutes later. It I know. Cuts and from I'm just the like, game wait, what? LeBron dead. walking him to E3 camp, and then Bugs showing up and being like, "Yeah." <laughs> it literally ends on the Taco Tuesday line, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's a lot. Just the pre- in some ways <sighs> fitting, but so. But like. How did you get here? I don't know. With tunes. It's like, you're not going to say, like, we fucking broke the server first and now we all exist in your world. Once again, in the original Space Jam, Michael Jordan has to reckon with the discovery. You're real. All of you are real. Like, there's a reaction to that. You exist. In this, it's just like, oh, you found a way to come through the TV? Cool. Uh, I don't know how many spare bedrooms we have. The answer is, you probably have a lot. You probably, probably, probably have a fair amount of spare probably bedrooms. Spare also, do tunes sleep? Yeah. Do they? Uh, no. What's the name of the big red guy again? Gossamer. Oh, I love Gossamer. He's cool. I love Gossamer. I he like that the Gossamer worst gets screen time in the transformation. He does. I will say, yeah. There, we should we, let's play the box office game. I'm done talking about this movie, but there's one. Oh, no, of, no. I'm sorry. We we have at least another hour. <laughs> there's they get turned into as you mentioned 3D tunes. Yes. Which we knew because it was in the promotional Correct. material, and it was like, oh god. Yeah. Now the movie actually presents this as like a hellish abomination. It's like yes. Algae Rhythm's final insult is to right. do this. Yeah. So it's kind of funny that that's in there where they're like, look, we did it. And they're also like, but we we know it's bad. Like, we know that's not cool. I also just want to... So then why'd you do it? Like, I know. Whatever. I, <laughs> I, I, don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Why'd you do it? I, I, do, why'd you well, do I it also, also wanted to mention, I noticed I was in the crowd in the movie. Yeah, you're in there. I had no yeah. idea. They, I don't even remember being there. They acquire Blank Check Productions. Yeah. We're part <laughs> of the server. For, <laughs> we're in Wild. HBO Max now, yeah. yeah. Uh, what happens to LG Rhythm at the end of this film? Do it's we have any? Uh, yeah, Warner see, Brothers just leave, right? right? Right, and Warner Brothers just takes his next pitch. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. There's not even a sequence of it in, like Warner Brothers being like, "All right, shut that down." Swagger so right. gets yeah. shoved in a cannon. Like Michael Jordan is like nerd Lux. Why do you let him talk like this? And they realize that they have an abusive boss, and they right. fucking shove him in a cannon. And then the nerd Lux are just on the basketball court. For two shots at the end of this oh, movie. Oh, I'm seeing here that, right, I forgot. He Remember, he posterizes Algae Rhythm. Right? Yes. Which was and, one of his, uh, like, fatalities. Yes. By the way, Ernie, Ernie Johnson. Ernie Johnson, who, who does the, you know, the, the commentary. This is the other one. Who is a great, yeah. a great, a, a great man. Television personality guy. Yeah, 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 but yeah, just yeah. really, it's a tough. It, I just think that's not. Like when when yeah, algae rhythm is deleted in that moment, I forgot about oh, that. But remember, well, he goes like, "This isn't how I want to why? go out." Why? Is that part of the game? I think yes. If it's right. Real if his rules apply to himself, I it guess. Like the loser is deleted. It means nothing. And right. uh, when what's his name, uh, uh, Chris Davis, who plays Malik, came on screen, I was just like, "Why didn't they hire Lil Rel to do this?" You see, right? Yeah. And then bringing Lil Rel and and what's his name, the other commentator, in, it's just like. Well, that's not putting him in a Bill Murray position. He has nothing to play off of. Yes. You're just putting him with a guy who's not a comedian on a green screen reacting to nothing. Pre-written jokes. Whereas like Bill Murray, Wayne Knight, the whole point is like, give the basketball player someone to play off of who is funny. As opposed to an okay child actor and a dramatic actor who is trying to like cut loose. And by the way, if they had, if the son had just designed sort of the 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 new NBA Jam, right? right. That would have changed the whole. That's all it needs to yeah, be. A it real doesn't game. need yeah. this extra layer. You could have of a four point play or a what you know, but just the whole idea of random. You didn't like the power ups? I was. I wish I could remember any of their names. Is the problem any of the trick That's plays so that they stupid. do? Of course, there's the the notorious PI. I mean, that gets well, them like five hundred points. Flips the court with the spinning he does do that that's cool i'm trying to remember what are the things that happen they move the hoop right is it yeah, one of the, yeah algae rhythm moves the hoop but he only does that one time he should right. have done that more often if he wanted to win in my opinion granny does something i don't fucking <laughs> granny <laughs> probably does she, she does she it she does she does the like yeah yeah she yeah. does like slow motion on right. uh chronos and, and then uh, you know the only one i kind of like because it felt a little more like actual looney tunes i was i i think the only looney tunes they get right in this movie are wiley coyote and roadrun and it helps that they're silent and they can't have them say dumb shit. Yes. But that that bit is almost a, a decent, this is how a Looney Tune would play basketball thing, where he has the crazy Acme contraption and he puts the bird seed on it and he knows that Roadrunner will hit it really fast and make a bunch of balls. Yeah. That works for me. Right. That was, yeah. Right. I give that a five. Yeah. I forgot about that too, right? The, 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 the many Wileys also go into the hoop. The clones. Right. Are, right. And so that... I mean, gets them a lot of points. So that, you need to acknowledge the skill works. of that. Like I under, 
And yeah, it's that. just good play, is what it I'm saying. Is. <laughs> like, it's just yeah, it's they do fundamentals. <laughs> I, I just want to say, mm -hmm. we talked about the aborted Space Jam sequels they didn't make, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Looney Tunes Back in Action was supposed to just be a pin of like, it's been six years. We right. need to get something back out there, and then we're going to make Skate Jam. Their plan was to make Skate Jam right after of Back course, in Action. Back in Action, which is... And you uh, know who's charismatic is Tony Hawk. That such a good actor. Fucking sizzler. <laughs> such a good actor. <laughs> I really enjoyed Tony Hawk, but there's a reason. Yes. He doesn't speak in his own video. <laughs> Correct. Um, <laughs> he's sizzled. Um... Uh, then uh, back in action is a huge fucking flop. It's a huge flop, even though it's a, a very artistically successful movie. Uh, yes, and right, I, I right. it has been a joy for me because I've defended that movie for 18 kind of years now. That the right. last month of pre-Space Jam articles is people being like, this is the one we should respect, not Space Jam. Yeah. Um, and that movie, look, is Joe Dante trying to deal with a lot of stupid studio notes, and there's weird shit in that movie, but it, it has a pure heart. Right. And there's really excellent shit in it, and it gets the Looney Tunes. Um, but since then, like every three years, Warner Brothers tries to do something with the Looney Tunes. There was famously this thing, Lunatics Unleashed, which was their post back in action thing where they were like, OK, we failed. The Lunatic, the Looney Tunes are no longer funny. They're badass. They become and superheroes. They did right? this like dark, gritty. They all have like neon Tron colors and like gritted teeth. And they're like an, a space force that fights people. Yeah. And that lasted for two seasons and was like, despise yep. they did a show called the looney tune show that was all the characters but in like a sitcom sort of setting bugs and daffy were neighbor were roommates Stop trying to fucking reinvent the wheel right. the then they did a the show Muppets, called rabbit you know? that was just like bugs there was another one that was on recently i will say this uh lebron this movie is rumored as early as 2013 right like people Correct. make the joke as as soon as lebron no, hits right. the court you're right but 2013 it's rumored i remember because i was on the set of uh draft day and it's Reitman Joe Magic, his producer, who like produced that fucking movie. And I was like, what's the deal with this? And Joe Magic was like, I, no one told us. Like, good luck. Godspeed. That was a fucking nightmare to make that movie. Have fun trying. Right? And then a year later, I believe Trainwreck comes out, is a big hit. And then LeBron signs his overall deal with Warner Brothers. And people are like, there we go. Finally, it's happening. It takes five years to get to filming after that point. Justin Lin's attached at one yep. point. He it goes the nowhere. Original. The Dick Ebersol's sons were writing it at one point. Sure. They fall off. Then when Coogler and Nance comes on is when it finally fucking gains traction. And uh, then and Nance... It's also when LeBron moves to LA. To which, play for the Lakers, which, by the way, is all part of it. Everyone says, oh, he's doing it because he wants to be fucking doing this entertainment stuff. Yeah. I don't know if you guys saw this, but a month ago he announced that he's moving his production deal to Universal. Interesting. For like four years. He's hmm. got a four-year overall deal. The Warner Brothers deal is done. Sure. Right. The I guess is that expired, the, right. the, the, what was the cut? Was the cut on HBO or what was that show called? The Barbershop the bar show. Yeah. It's on HBO. The Shop. Yeah. Right. The Shop. The Shop. So like he did that and he did this and now they're saying they're going to do things for fucking He produced a universe. few other things. He did that right? show Survivor's Remorse, oh, which right. was on Stars. Yes, I'm a good sorry. Show. I forgot about that. He did, he's yeah. done some things. Yeah. Survivor's Remorse was really good. He's it was sort of hurt things. by being on uh, uh, Stars. Um, and, and, no. Has he produced John David other Washington movies? was on Ballers. Mm -hmm. Jesse T. Usher was on Survivor's Correct. Remorse. Okay. Uh, what were you saying, James? Has he produced other movies, David? I, I don't think or so. Or no. Like, I, I know of. He's done documentary shit. That's the thing. He's yeah, done yeah, stuff yeah. more in the sort of sports movie world here. Right. I'm going to look it up, though. Let's see. Let's the see. Universal Deal announcement I saw made it sound like they're going to sort of try to shepherd more I, stuff. Not LeBron vehicles. Isn't but, he, doesn't he, like, own some chunk of Friday the... He's involved with a Friday the 13th remake. Which I think Weird. might be universal. Uh, let's see. He right, like like he produced that Warner's. Netflix Naomi Osaka thing that Garrett mm -hmm. Bradley made. Right. He produced a uh, documentary for HBO about like uh, college athletes, amateur yes, athletes, yes, right? Yes. Top class. He did that game show, The Wall, oh, right? Jesus, um, right. Which everyone yes. has a game show now, yeah. right? Uh, he did something called Becoming. But he's producing a lot of shit. Uh, which <laughs> is another sort of athlete Disney Plus. He did I Promise, which was about his school. Right. He's done a yeah. He has done a fair amount of things. Mo yeah. mostly like not mo seemingly like stuff, mostly yeah. neither successful nor n sort of Impactful, notably right. unsuccessful. And just he's very also kind sort of, of yeah. doing like a low level Oprah thing where it's like right. here are my causes, here are people I want to shine a light on, kind of shit. Right. Um, I don't think he necessarily has like uh, good commercial instincts. It does not seem like he does. Uh, doesn't he does I mean obviously like he's worked the Nike deal he's well. a good businessman I'm saying right. a good commercial instinct 
stink. Oh, wow. you don't like his sneakers? Compared to fucking Jordan's? Well, it's the, again, well, well that's like, it, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Like, the if we're doing bar. the comparison. Do you think he's a better player than Jordan? Like, do you think he's the guy? I know it's the most hackneyed discussion in basketball. Um, no, I just think you can make the argument he's had a better career, right. and I think those arguments are very difficult to separate. The crucial argument to me is that, and this is, ha- and people have said, it, I do think Jordan was playing against worse competition, right? Like the NBA was at its most diluted yeah. in his prime and is at its strongest in LeBron's. Like um, that's LeBron's biggest but, argument. But I'll say this, like even removing other players from the equation, as someone who doesn't watch basketball games but will occasionally be compelled to watch like Michael Jordan YouTube videos, Jordan is a more visually compelling player. I just player. look at him and I'm like, this is insane what this person is doing on a physical level. Whereas LeBron, I understand it's like, he's a very, you know, obviously he's a physically gifted person. But I, I from what I gather, his power comes more from like his strategic basketball. He's a well, he's a, player. Uh, Jordan he's was more much more, uh, team to get specific, like was a much assassin. more flexible athlete as yes. well, which is a big difference in like the visual component. But I would also say on the other direction, and not just the rules, not just like the proliferation, the three point shooting right, and the hand right, check, right, right. but also just the, the extent to which NBA basketball now runs so much through whoever your team's best player is, which is a, also a big component of like the player empowerment and switching teams mm-hmm. because if yes. you get LeBron, right. like I, that was not the true lot more. to the same yes. extent. Like Michael Jordan could have averaged 10 assists a game, 12 rebounds a game, if the team had literally just run everything through him the way they do their star players now. So, I think they're, but that was, it's, it's, it's a that tough was so comparison cool. I mean, that way. This is but, what I right. fucking love about the last dance where it's like about the bulls. Yeah. Like it wasn't about the Jordan show. Part of that, that fucking legacy was like, look at what he got out of these other players. Look at Probably how he that. went. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You're talking to the other players. Well, I think for like Jordan Lone. actually was in the team realm doing a lot to subvert the image of the Jordan show. By being like, I'll still like punch Steve Kerr in the fucking well, face. You know what I mean? The whole like, thing with Jordan, like, which is not was, a star whole, thing to do. But you know, that whole that's thing like a, with like giving Kerr the fucking is that's what right that yeah. that section about when he took the amazing shot and no one mm-hmm. expected it. Yeah, and then he goes and gives that speech and he's like making the jokes about like Jordan eating his dirt and shit like that. Yeah, and like, he's like fuck you. But there's a certain <laughs> yes. generosity to that, right? Well. Am I wrong? But, but LeBron, the whole thing with Jordan is no one knew he was an asshole until later. I understand. And he's then an they asshole. realized separate, he's a be, huge to asshole. To be fair, with Jordan. And with LeBron, separate, people call him an asshole when he's really obviously the, not Jordan an asshole. Jordan is a separate right. conversation. I feel like, though, there is something. Jordan as an asshole, I think, is a little complicated because it's, if you watch The Last Dance, one, one really interesting thing about Jordan is the extent to which, like, uh, the reaction to Jordan from his teammates is so much different than, like, his driver. Or like his sure, mate, sure. like right, Jordan right. seemed to be very kind and often friends Generous, with yep. people who mm-hmm. like, if you, for instance, if you did a Carl Malone documentary, the security John guards. Stockton would yes. probably say playing with Carl was amazing, but we don't know what like Carl's like driver thinks of him. Yeah. He might be a total dickhead. He's you know what I mean? Like, fuck Carl Jordan Malone. seemed to be like a very nice guy to a lot of the people in his life, but particularly prickly and unnice to his teammates and, 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 and his coaches. And his, and his, oh, yeah. yeah, right, right, right. yeah. Right, he's just ruthless. But like, I think Le- LeBron is nice. There's not or like he's fine. He seems yes. like a good guy. Yes. Like, I would yeah. much large, rather you know, like, like fucking have a beer with LeBron than Michael Jordan. But that's part of it. Works against which guy I'd rather watch. I, in a movie. LeBron is very nice, yes. but LeBron also it does feel like a lot, a lot of a lot of LeBron's kindness uh, has a lot to do with the way LeBron sees himself and sees himself uh, in relation to like the narrative of yes. his career and yes. his life and all this stuff. And it's like there's. You know, LeBron has been criticized in the past for not feeling like the most genuine. But that's the whole thing, right? LeBron has to live in public because everything's in public now and it's social media. Right. Jordan didn't have that burden. Like, with all his fame, he still got to live in private, go gamble, go And he was, like, the most public in a way that any athlete had been up until that point. And still it was private. But he was, like, putting himself out there more than anyone else. The last thing I want to say about the Looney Tunes, just to close this loop on this thing I was setting up before we go to the box office game, is like seven or eight years ago, I had like a fucking phone call with a guy uh, at Warner Brothers when I think they maybe hadn't announced Space Jam yet, but it was heavily rumored was going to happen. And he was like, I'm tasked with figuring out how to revive the Looney Tunes. I don't really know what they are. <laughs> right? Like he right. was just like. I don't know. Your give agent some, said that you're like, a dork likes cartoons. On the Looney Tunes, right. right. And the pitch at the time was we want to do like five to ten theatrically released short films mm-hmm. with the Looney Tunes. Logical. And LeBron. They were like, we want to uh-huh. start testing them out in the way that Jordan had the ads. 
And my whole thing to them, which, uh, look, I didn't work on these. I didn't do anything, right? But my whole pitch to them was like, you shouldn't think about the combination of LeBron and Bugs Bunny together as like what their personalities are. You should write Looney Tunes and place LeBron in them. Like what you want to do is that kids have no perspective. and You want to remind them what these characters are innately funny at doing right. and just come up with comedic circumstances. And rather than being Bugs and Daffy, have it be Bugs and LeBron for this one or have it be LeBron is filling the granny role in right. a Sylvester and Tweety cartoon or whatever. Just like get LeBron comfortable in front of camera and put them in comedic circumstances. This does not happen. What happens is they like should have done that. they should have done that. Yeah. What happens is uh, like. A year ago, when HBO Max launched, they just put up 60 Looney Tunes. They had been quietly working they're, they're, on they're, you can watch them. 60 they're Looney on Tunes. HBO Max. They put none of them in theaters. Nope. They just kind of got dumped on HBO Max went up there. Guess what? They're good. Yes. They're all fucking good. It's the best shit they've done with the Looney Tunes in 20 years. I was talking to Matt Singer about it, and he, I haven't watched them, but he, he was like, yeah, they're not only are they better than the movie, they look better. They look like, better, the but they also have better. their own style. Right. They're not just pastiche. They have right. a comedic pr perspective. They got good people involved. They did 60 of them. Hey. It's bizarre how disconnected that is from all the Looney Tunes stuff in this movie. That's all I'm going to say. And that, you look, if you watched the movie and it fucking bummed you out as much as it did us, then maybe go watch those shorts instead. Right. And that's going to get your Enjoy fix. That. And if you're listening to this episode, you didn't watch the movie and you're wondering whether it's worth hate watching. It's not. Because the cardinal sin of this movie is it's fucking boring. It's, it's fucking boring. boring. Too long. When you, when you said, David, the clips like, you saw that are cursed watch those so if you want to laugh at it or whatever most of it is but, cursed right. there's not this perverse like i can't fucking believe right. this sort yeah. of, when you say it's less terrible than you thought it would be it's because to a certain degree you expect you're going to watch this book of henry style and go oh my fucking god right and it's less of an abomination and more of just like there's nothing to this movie yeah. it's joyless it's cynical i sat there stone-faced I, I at certain points i just took stock of the fact of there is no muscle in my face currently working right there are jokes happening on screen I'm not wincing. I'm not smiling. I'm not looking more intently. I'm just blank. I'm fucking blank. Just kind of, I'm yeah. like, what the fuck is happening and why is any of this I, happening? I but, saw it with but the crowd. No, Did you watch like, it at home, I assume? Uh, yeah. I saw it with the crowd silent. Silent. We saw it with the crowd that was, I would say, largely children. Like, it was a lot of parents yeah, and kids. 50-50. And yeah, then people you, our age, silent. Like, maybe no two things got any sort of response. Michael yeah, B. Jordan. Yeah. And Michael why is the computer black? Yeah, like, I, Jordan I, got yeah, laughs. Those are the only two laughs I remember. But it just felt, like, very quiet. Uh, ben, we have to ask because uh, your uh, girlfriend outed you right before we started recording. Damn, you were saying I how awful. I no, you had you had girlfriend outed you right before we started recording and did reveal that you cried three times while watching. You did three and I couldn't times, find it. and I don't. All right, I cry really easily at movies. Too. Yes, I'm an emotional love... guy, and we love it about you. <laughs> but I mean, I cry easily, and but I can't even. I can't. I, yeah. I was mad. I was mad, and she, and I know uh -huh. she noticed, and uh -huh. I was like fighting it back. Right, and she's right. like, "Why are you crying?" I'm like, "I don't really know why." <laughs> Imagine if Ben were like, "I never cry during the film." I know <laughs> this was the one. This is but the one you that you have to understand, James. Like, we did an episode on Kiki's delivery service, the Miyazaki movie, and we came into the studio. It was on a weekend, and Ben was sitting on the couch of the office. No one else was there. He was watching this movie and sobbing. It was great. So it we know that yeah. there's a history of Ben now, getting be very fair, emotionally affected. That's ben, a masterpiece. Ben was kidnapped by an algorithm when he was 10 years old. So that is, that, maybe <laughs> that was unlocking it a little yes. bit. Right. His dad right. really yeah. wanted him to be a scientist. Right. Didn't yeah. want right. him to produce right. podcasts. Ben does know wet fire. His, his yeah. father, Larry <laughs> Bird. Right. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, I love Looney Tunes. Sure. I love the characters. Yeah, I do too. You're a bit of a Looney Tune yourself. I am kind of a Looney Tune. <laughs> Taz <laughs> was the stuffed animal that I slept with as a child. I mean, Pretty yes, cute. obviously makes sense. Bugs Bunny, I, I would argue there is a case to be made that he is the funniest person to ever be in movies if you consider him, the fact that he's not a person and, and you allow it. When did you cry? I got emotional when they were all together. Oh. Sure, sure. When I they're all know. back together I don't on know. the ship. It's just yeah. seeing them. Yeah. Yeah. It unlocks something doing in bits. my head. Yeah. That, and doing bits. Watch that these I just, shorts. Watch these shorts. Right, I will. Uh, what yeah. else? What else? Yeah, but that one makes uh, a little a it, little sense. Yeah. It was that. And then it was just kind of like, I don't know, the father-son stuff. Mm -hmm. And like... It, granny. And granny. <laughs> Notorious no, there, was like, there was something... <laughs> <laughs> See, seeing, seeing such a tasteful tribute to yeah, notorious B.I.G. I'm sure he's looking me. down in heaven. Right? Uh, no, I don't know. There okay. was just it was just seeing them together, and then there was some point in the movie where then when they were like down, but then 
they they were and then up again. I don't remember. Do you remember? Ben, your so girlfriend you just, like, is currently the, standing in the door frame, shaking her head. Come, come on, Nelly. Come on, what Nelly. Happened? Get on. Get on microphone. You definitely cried when Don Cheadle was being mean to the sun. <laughs> <laughs> when he turns on him. When he. When he. I don't like that. I don't like when algorithms are mean. <laughs> You didn't like the bullying. No. Um, the big father-son embrace. Yeah. Because yeah, I like father-son nice. stuff. That's, that's, that's kind of nice. nice. That's kind of nice. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, uh, yeah. you're sort of talking around <laughs> here. You're like, I don't know some of this stuff. And Nellie's just standing with her arms crossed, shaking her head, going like, are you going to say it or not? Let's play the box office oh, game. Yay. Griffin, this okay. film opened number Robust one at the box 32 office. $32 million. Dollars. Did better than I thought it would. It did too. I I mean, my question to you was like, is anyone going to go see this? hit or massive flop. Right? right. And there was a point where I was like, there's a, dis- a depressing uh, dystopian outcome where I see this movie opening to 50 mm-hmm. uh, just because the nostalgia is so high. I also could see it opening to like, 10 and I shitting think, the bed in the height style. I think a 32 million opening like in a normal world with no HBO Max probably does mean kind of like a 50 million opening, doesn't it? I like, think so. You know, in, in a not so. total no COVID world. Yeah. I think that's a 50 yeah. million dollar opening. That having been said, uh, second weekend drops have been like They've been horrible yeah. for everything in this era. Not it feels for even more loaded. Almost everything. No, like Quiet Place has held very well. There are some that sure. have done better. Usually movies that are not available on yeah. other services. Yeah, F9's right. held pretty F9, well. Yeah, F9 had a bad drop on July 4th weekend, but yeah. as every You're box right. office person all will these, tell you, that's actually normal. All like, the July HBO Max movies movie have time. had right. the worst drops. And and, uh, and now Black uh, Widow had yes. a bad drop. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, Which is number two. Right. And even, even the small drops, it still is. Things are not multiplying as much as they used to like yeah right, I, i'm yeah. just saying the multiplier on quiet place and f9 it, when compared to earlier films in those franchises is lower it does feel yeah. like everything shifted a little more front loaded the streaming stuff day and date has gone even more in that direction i think this is going to fucking multiply horribly it feels like imagine. the buzz could not be more uh toxic is there any chance we see another space jam what would in they the do like i mean also i think there's certainly a chance right I don't even want to consider that reality. There's definitely a chance. I, I mean, just, there's always a chance. What is it? LeBron is a more media-minded person than MJ in that way, I so he might want to do it. He's deal to Universal. True. So I, maybe not. If I were him, my takeaway from this would be I should do a, a fucking another comedy. I believe that is I what his takeaway will be. Back He's to Judd been Apatow. tweeting in this kind of way yeah. of like, see, it did well. And it's sort of like, you yeah. know what? He's probably like, uh, I'm, I'm mostly unscathed by this train wreck movie that I had to fire the director or whatever. You know, like, you know. But like Reitman saw, he should have done everything he could to get Apatow or anyone Apatow adjacent to be the comedy whisperer on this movie. He probably should have. I don't know. I mean, he got Coogler. Like, Coogler is clearly the Reitman type. And Coogler's but he's not like, funny. I love Coogler, but like... It's fucking hilarious. You ever seen that guy? <laughs> no, you know, I mean, fair. But like, right, Coogler is the honcho he's bringing right. in. Coogler's like, great, Terrence Nance. This guy has this sensibility that's going to make sense. We're going to... Clearly yes. sells him on him. Right. And then obviously something. Yeah, I, I, it, it is pretty not, crazy, yes, by the way, that jive. we're talking about like LeBron James going into like what his seventeenth or eighteenth season I in know. the NBA, whatever it is, is also like maybe plotting his next Apatovian comedy. Like, it, it, you yeah, know, it it's crazy. a really that's why he might yeah. be the best. But but <laughs> like uh, we we said afterwards, like James and I were talking, and we were like, I I have to imagine that from the moment Terrence Nance gets fired, Coogler just kind of goes like, okay. Because I just kind of can't believe him watching this footage once Malcolm Deedley comes on and going like, good, or having any notes the that are listened to. The defense they will trot out is the defense you always trot out for a movie like this, which is like, what? Kids liked it. It did kids liked it, it made money. Get off up. my back. Right. right. You know. And I think it, and that's maybe what they'll, kids they'll get away like with it. it. Yeah, that, sure, guy's probably. Just, yeah. that guy's just got so much fucking integrity and has made like two of the most personal fucking major studio movies of the last 10 years. It is hard to believe. And I read interviews with him back in the day when he was talking about, like, we're really trying to make a movie about, like, black men as fathers Mm -hmm. and what this means in a current landscape. I understand how with an avant-garde director who's maybe coming at it from a fucking Lord and Miller angle and the movie's more self-aware and this and that, and he's trying to put an emotional backbone, that makes sense. But I think from a business calculation, it was a bad idea not to get a comedy person involved because they forgot that the number one thing that this premise should be is funny. There should be jokes in it. Well, there are uh, jokes in it. 
Yeah. A successful yeah. drug. Granny, yeah. Notorious P.I.G. Yeah. Uh, makes an appearance. Number two at the box office is Black Widow with mm-hmm. a colossal drop. A movie that you were not a fan of? I think it sucks. You, you, you think it's like I think it's bottom like bottom, of the barrel Marvel. Bottom tier Marvel. Like my question I don't is, think it's very good. My I, question I is, I is it, it the worst one or is it like the third worst one? I don't think it's the worst one. I found it so unpleasant. I saw it in 4DX and I almost fell asleep. And that's like difficult. That is difficult to fall asleep when a chair is punching you. But it happened a number of times. I saw it with JD. He felt the same way. I think that movie sucks. I don't think it's very good at all. Uh, James, you don't really care about Marvel movies. No. You've seen three of them? You yeah, saw two or three. Guardians and Black Panther. You saw ones that broke through Well, to... I saw the first Iron Man. Sure. I think those are the only three you've seen, though, right? The first Iron Man, the first Guardians, and Black Panther? Am I wrong? Uh, no, I saw um, uh, the first Captain America. Sure. Okay. Okay. And Which I put uh, in higher movie. tier. Good movie. Yeah. That might be it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the biggest problem with Black Widow to me is... And it's been remarked on. It's just, it seems like they're like, look, all right, fine, we'll do a Black Widow movie. And Scarlett Johansson has the energy of like, yeah, okay, for I'll do a Black Widow movie. She's got, she's got she, Michael Jordan energy. She, I, she's, I, yeah. Seems bored. She seems really bored. Like, it's and I'm very like, bizarre. You know, I don't know if she's bored or if she's just playing this sort of removed character, but she just seems pretty bored. And Florence yes. Pugh is there. And Florence Pugh is just such an, she can't help but blow her off the screen. Florence, she's not even yes. trying. Florence Pugh is, is pretty impressive in that movie, considering what she's given to work with. The Harbour and White's characters make no sense in those performers I like a lot. They don't make any sense in those roles, and yeah. they don't make any sense. The plot doesn't make it, but whatever. Pugh, Pugh punches through. The entire movie feels like the How Did Jack Get His Tattoos episode of Lost. <laughs> right. right. Yes. And yeah. here's my big takeaway, then we can stop talking about this movie. I think it would be difficult even if you were directly challenged to do it, to make a film that is more glib and flippant about a global trafficking ring. It is... Well, they're assassins, okay? So they're assassins. I'm just so saying, Marvel widows. movies often do this thing where they take kind of extreme yeah, subjects yeah, 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 and yeah. candy coat them and don't really deal with the darkness of it. But this movie, it is so like overt. They're not like dancing around what it's about, and also they don't really give a shit about it at all other than as a vehicle for female empowerment to have them at the end go like, yes, thank you. They they say yes, thank you. Those are their only words. They are very diverse, though. All of the widows, there's black, black widows and Hispanic ones. It was just that, look, I joked about this. It's that Kevin Feige thing where he's like, look, look, look. Look. They don't say anything. (laughs) They're nothing. They're fucking brainwashed slaves. Like like the Taken 2 like actually is more invested in its victims than this movie is. Number anyway. three at the box office is the other new movie this week. A movie I'm very excited to see. Oh, the new wide release movie. Uh, yeah. Why am I not thinking about the? Uh, oh, oh, oh. Which I'm also very excited to see. I almost saw the other night. I'm gonna go see this week. Escape Room Tournament of Champions, a sequel to a masterpiece. Great movie. Have you seen Escape Room, Ben? I have not. You would dig it. You'd love it. It fucking yeah. rules. Yeah, it rules. It's it. a just cool kid. On. Don't. I'm not cool movie for cool else. kids. Right. Yeah, everything about it's good. Silly horror movie, horror thriller. Excited cool. to see the sequel. Puzzles. Taylor great. Russell's a fucking star. Great. I'm all Love in. Uh, Sony has had this very bizarre strategy where they held on to all of their movies, didn't sell them to streaming when everyone else was doing their fire sale, then sold a couple things to Netflix right as the pandemic was winding down, and then a bunch of these movies they just announced like. Actually, it's coming out in three weeks. Like, Peter Rabbit was supposed to come out later. Mm-hmm. This was they supposed to come out up. later. Yep. They moved them up with no marketing, and they have underperformed. And it's a bummer to me, because this was, like, pushed back to January of next year, which is when the first movie came out in January, overperformed. And then they went, like, never mind, this is coming out in 20 days, and no one knows it's out, and it's doing poorly, and I'm worried it would, they won't make a third one. Uh, I think it's going to be okay. I think they're happy with it, apparently. But we'll see. Who knows? The industry makes no fucking sense anymore. It's all I mean, run by algorithm. Nothing, so. yeah, algorithm. Yeah, algorithm, yes. Number algorithm. four, Griffin. It's a film we saw in theaters together. Uh, the movie we saw in theaters together is F9, my second favorite movie of 2021. Good movie. I, ben, I, you saw I was it. saying this to I you. I've gone to the theaters now like 20 times, I think, mm-hmm. since vaccination. Sure. Uh, step up your fucking game, Lights, Camera, Jackson, who was bragging about five. I've gone at least 20 times. The only two movies I fully love are F9 and Undine. Um, those are the only two you've loved so far. Well, you were pretty hyped up about Those Who Wish Me Dead, though. 
That's my third. You I d- were kind of swagging out about I would. Wish I, I, oh, no, I agree. But like that for me is like that movie is like the fucking best gentleman six Have I've seen ever seen. Pig yet? I'm seeing Pig tomorrow. Pig? I expect oh, I will love that. Yeah, I got to see it. Uh, yeah. yeah, in the Heights didn't quite. I'm I trying to it. think of like, a, I liked you see it. Zola. Zola, uh, Zola I'm seeing. So fucking hyped. Zola, I'm seeing That's this my week. That's shit, man. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, and I will say, I'll say, I like Luke a lot. Luke is probably number three. Those who wish me dead's number four. Um, uh, I've been uh, so bullish about going back to the theaters that a lot of the things that have gone straight to streaming I haven't watched. So I haven't seen No Good Deed yet. I haven't seen Mitchell's versus Machines. A couple of the other streaming things that people like. No sudden move is what you're talking about. Not No Good Deed. No Good Deed is um. Jesus Christ. What's it Idris called? Elba and Taraji P. Right. Exactly. Why? All right. God damn Number why. five, of course, is the film starring my daughter. The Boss Baby Family Business. Yeah. Uh, this is the first Which time I think we're saying this like on mic. Like uh, I have uh, now established, I found a new bruise to poke on David which is that his daughter looks exactly like the boss baby. He agrees. I swear <laughs> I'm not doing this just to piss him off. I think she looks like the boss baby. I'm now willing to reveal on Mike that unrelated and un- not knowing this, Joey your brother sent a family a, 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 a poster of boss baby to the family text thread. After David, I she looks sent a, like, the, you, you know what? She looks like a baby. Your daughter, <laughs> you know what? Your daughter has blue eyes and very fair hair. <laughs> she does. Her pattern is very similar to the She's little blonde the curl that the boss sort of baby has. The, the, the widow's peak. She has sort a similar of shaped skull. I understand you should take as a compliment. Boss baby is a baby that was designed to be adorable. You have a very cute daughter, but your daughter looks like the fucking boss baby. You should own it. <laughs> you should dress her up in a little suit. I'm not going <laughs> to. I put the, you know, you can buy jeans for the baby. Like we have, yeah. someone gave us a pair of jeans and I put them on and it's so cute. But she was just like, what is that? Like, <laughs> yeah. Why are you doing this? To me? Well, get Even re- though they're like little stretchy baby jeans. David, get ready for fucking Hanukkah where I buy her eight suits. <laughs> uh, well, um, Forever Purge going down. Good this. movie. I you like saw it. That one. I haven't seen it yet. firmly in my top 10. Uh, really like it. Quiet uh, Upper end of the franchise. For two. Me. Quiet Place 2. Solid liked it. Uh, the Roadrunner, uh, the uh, uh, Anthony Bourdain movie. Uh, a movie that was uh, seemingly produced by Algae Rhythm and has similarly uh, uh, <laughs> dark, bleak thoughts mm-hmm. about human uh, beings. Cruella yeah. hanging out in the top 10. Cruella's might, I mean, it's in the 80s I right now. I did not like Cruella. Yes, 83. Cruella, I will say, falls into the categories of movies I probably give an extra star because I saw it in theaters and I didn't get to go to theaters. Isn't it also two and a half hours long? It's very long. Very long. Uh, But like Cruella and Kong versus Godzilla and whatever, I just sat there and I went like, I am happy to be seeing a movie again. None of this upsets me. I don't care anymore. I'm just happy to be watching something. Didn't like Cruella. Okay. What's Ben doing? Ben is He's showing us something around. Merchandise spotlight. Should do merch spotlight really quick because this, this is a fucking jersey. merch goddamn you can, fucking. Uh, you you know, can buy the uh, the the Toon Squad uniform. Warner I think Brothers, that's pretty cool. Warner Brothers had a press I think the uniform's release good. Bragging about the fact that this is like the most licensed partners that any movie has had like ever, or at least in a very. What about long that time. moment where LeBron falls? And he makes a Nike swoosh as the hole instead of like a regular hole. Yeah, that, was that was good. Grim. Here are the shoes. I almost, good. I almost got they. They're like little toys where it's the basketball. And you open up and you get a character inside. And I was gonna do that. Like it was a reprise of our whole Transylvania episode. And I couldn't give uh, enough of a shit to go to Five Below and purchase them. Mm-hmm. He has Roadrunner sneakers I, out by Nike, LeBron by Looney Tunes. These are, Those are kind of cool. I, I don't love these, and I'm the target audience for Looney Tunes sneakers. You are. That's true. I had Looney Tunes Keds as a kid. And then they have a Goon Squad pair of sneakers as well. In case you well. want it to be wet fire. Or right. Whatever. Well, I mean, in case. These suck. I think they're bad. Okay, this is Sylvester and Tweety sneakers. They look kind of like Sylvester, and then they got a Tweety stripe on them. These are just lame. That's a Lola Bunny one, maybe? Uh-huh. Yas Queen, Empowered. I hated that fucking Wonder Woman scene. It's so bad. Make a joke. It's and it's okay. Rosario Dawson playing her, because Rosario Dawson plays her in all the like DC animated movies. I would assume so, But then, right? then adopt the style of those movies, rather than this generic, no. this is a comic book no. style. Or make it look like a real fucking like, comic no. book. No, wet fire. I don't know. But oh, this Jesus is the best, Christ! This is the best <laughs> merch <laughs> that we have to buy for her. It's, uh, it's, it's Pat. <laughs> hey, what's no, Pete. Pete. What's what's Pete, 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 David? It's, Come on! Referee pocket t-shirt from Is he supposed to be a whistle? I don't know. Is that what it His is? His hands are USB ports. He's got USB ports on his finger. 
Jeez, is this at the back of the shirt? No, and that's another version of the you shirt. Know what it, you know what it sort of looks like is what like if you like combine like composite or it feels like if you can com- combine composite sketches yes. and then it just becomes this like whole like it's indescript, a, nondescript yes. like face. Yes. It looks you know like they what took I mean? five yeah. characters that have sold a lot of merchandise. Right. Right. It's like if you together. pour all the colors in and <laughs> yes. it's like, yeah. like brown. He, doesn't really he has do. no personality. He has no game. And he is physically indistinct. Mm. This I don't know. Is I feel like he had an electrifying chemistry with that. None of us know what he is. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. He's a thing. I couldn't find on the he's internet exactly, either. He's there's, no, there's, no, no, there's no thing. There's no information. It feels like one of those things where like, should we say what he is? And it's like, what if we just don't? We, yeah. we could probably I did get assume away with he this. was from some other shit no, movie I hadn't seen. No, he's from nothing. Something. This yeah. is their one original character and he can suck my butt cheeks. <laughs> I hope he dies. So we're gonna get Griffin one of the uh, oh, Peach geez. shirts, He's and then we're gonna get Granny you this. and Speedy yeah, uh, in the Matrix. Matrix. You gotta get a Matrix. Why would with Granny, Granny be and in Speedy. the Matrix? Should Granny be in like Driving Miss Daisy or something? Is that a Warner Brothers property? Yes. Is it? See, I put five times more thought into this than they. Did. I don't know if Warner Brothers wanted <laughs> to revisit <laughs> Driving <laughs> Miss Daisy <laughs> with <laughs> LeBron. <laughs> 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 Because like, what, what, is he going to be driving Granny? Like, I, I don't know. Quickly, we're getting in yeah, maybe trouble Bugs here. Bugs is driving Granny. I right. don't know. LeBron's Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> yeah, LeBron's Dan Aykroyd. That's this is a, another we could get you this one. As going Nike. old school. But like Ben, look at this. Is is this on the Nike site? No, this is on the Looney Tunes site. Jeez, LooneyTunes.com. Mm-hmm. I should spend more time in that site. But uh, like eight thousand different T-shirt designs. They just made so much fucking merch for this movie. What else are they supposed to do? I know. Yeah. Well, and they also, they're like, the first movie made a billion dollars in merch. I guess people want to buy this as much. But I also feel like we're in a different climate. I don't know. I wonder if any of this shit will sell. It won't. There's no monoculture anymore. It won't. But right. it'll do okay I think should, enough the that The sneakers everyone's... will sell because sneakerhead culture is it's, so you know, extreme. It's like they'll just sort of escape by. And the whole thing but is like, like... I don't know if kids are fucking buying the toys. Is like, LeBron going to win another ring? James? I just like to occasionally throw a basketball question um, to James. We're no, done. it's good. We're done. We should. Um... I think uh, I think, like, I think he will because I think that LeBron. I mean, look, it's very hard to say how long someone's career is really going to last because a lot of times when it, three it's easy years, to project right. and be like, yeah, like he can be like a he could turn into like a power forward and be like a supporting player for four years. But a lot of times when it s- stops, it stops quickly. But I do see LeBron at some point possibly leaving the Lakers again, and at that point, I think we can all assume that wherever he goes, he's going to pick. We know now he's going to pick the best team, right? The best team he can He'll find. Just be right. And, more and also, you know, maybe LeBron will go the... play for like a million bucks somewhere and try to win a ring when he's like. It would be fun if he like went to Charlotte and did that, played for MJ. Well, and if maybe if Charlotte has like at that point LaMelo Ball and three other really good players, he would go there. But I think LeBron. Well, but that's the ego thing where it's like he might actually be able to sacrifice ben his ego to do it. Whereas MJ could other obviously. And I right. would like to ask Even the on the Wizards. Ben, right. We're still like, well, on the star Bugs here. Bugs Bunny yes. will like, ever oh, win another Oscar. Like, obviously, the prerequisite <laughs> for this is that they would have to start putting the shorts back into theaters theatrically. But if anything, that's the thing I would like to see Warner Brothers be emboldened to do off of the success of Space Jam, A New Legacy. I doubt they will because producing more shorts is just more content for HBO Max, right. which is the beast that they want to feed. It would be nice if they started putting these characters before I feel like the shorts that again. win now are so often it's like, oh, it's about the guy's dad was in the Holocaust. They're very moody. Well, <laughs> like, that's why, very I, that's why I'm saying like, it. And if it's, not, it's, if it's not a short like that, and I'm very impressed with the fact that I've successfully hijacked this conversation. If it's not a short like that, it's a Disney or Pixar short that played before a film in theaters got a wide release, and so everyone saw it. It's like Paper Man or some shit. So I feel like they could put these things in film festivals to qualify them for an Oscar, and they're good shorts, and they'd be competitive, but... I don't think they'll beat the moody personal piece unless they put it in front of a Warner Brothers movie and it actually plays well with the crowd. That's what I want to say. It'd be nice to see Bugs win another Oscar, maybe even just a, a honorary. An honorary. Yeah. Hey, it'd just be cool if like someone else other than Pixar put a short in front of a feature. Yeah, I Who's miss it. and win? Pixar is no longer putting shorts in front of features. Yeah, now they're just saving them for. Fucking I think the Bucks are going to win. I do. I just think that. I, do I don't think. I think without. Chris Paul seems uh, Chris Disney Paul at the height of his shorts in front of features. They yeah. put one and, before and, Raya in the last dragon. And I dragon think also like, like it. The, I mean the, the fun thing about the Suns having home court advantage is basically style. I, found I know the Bucks land. seem like they're in great position, but they Sorbonne, have to win. Yes, games. I also and think you have to win. Games. Such, so this is a do or die game. I like the app for both teams in the movie. And so at home, I think I have to take. Did you hear that stat? Ten and one. But I'd like more shorts. 
in general, over the history be nice of the NBA. If, like, I don't know, especially yeah, like as you're trying to convince people to go home. back to the theaters. It's like, let's like make movie theaters feel fucking The home special. team is 10 and 1. The home team is 10 Again. and 1. Yeah. You know? Because like, you only have every studio should have the their like fucking short film factory. Right. Everyone has so, characters at okay. this point that at, they own. In Detroit. That they could put back into circulation. The Pistons could put it away. Or new characters. And the Spurs. There was like a scary another And there were another. Yeah, I just don't put a short of like It's so important to win that game. They have to win that Like they'd be like, oh, this Nick Nickelodeon movie is going to have Chris a cat Paul dog ring. short Chris Paul. before. Yeah. But and it I'm, wouldn't just be an I'm, episode. I've it would be been something very happy with like Giannis. Yeah, you could do shit like that know, again going too. Into Even if it's only whatever. in front of totally. family. And I think also, I think there's something that was very positive time, about Giannis like winning a ring a year after choosing to stay in a very small market. Now animated movies are two hours. He's the only one who did it. Like, which you have to think about Cars was... The first also, animated movie super to be teams, over two hours, I think. You know, the Nets, the in a, Clippers, in an right? American like, studio system. You know, these guys least. who don't play together, uh, they get hurt. Incredibles it's like, was okay, the longest good. animated that's your film. Weakness. And by the way, I don't think that's at a the thing time the when it came out, I think that's it's like, like no, they didn't do that. I you know? so, uh, first, and now first of all, run times have got absolutely out of for the Nets. Where Luca like, is like when people well, the Nets had gone the Nets were hurt. They, they played together like, what Why ten games so all year, like, the three of them. Something like that. Get right. back to nothing, basics, right. basically. You know, you know Kawhi is showing up for like half of the couldn't afford more than half of the game. Right. Right. Said, yeah, like, these are, on later, these are right. permanent Maximum. features of these teams that are now being you superseded like by what a do player next, like it and a team like doing in things stage in a more traditional way, which is a big the, part of their success, the right? franchises. I'm sorry, Ben, that this is going to be like more of an editing right. hassle for you, no, but no, I do think people great, will like it. We are it. done, and you sort of all have to now leave my home. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I uh, and as always, uh, Pete can fucking die. Pete? Well, I mean, he could at least be defined. And then die? Okay. If we're going out, we're going out loony. (laughs) I'm on the quotes page. It's so bad.